more to help your Rangers. He's done everything but get a save. His current hot streak is amazing to watch, and yet he needs help to bring this team a needed win over the Orioles. Let's hope Adrian's performance is infectious and the rest of the lineup heats up. Texas Rangers baseball is coming up next on Fox Sports Southwest. Texas Rangers baseball is presented by AT&T Uber's TV. Oh, welcome to Globe Live Park. It is Bart at the park tonight. And the Rangers certainly hope this turns into a different breed of baseball game as they try to gain one win in the three-game series against the Orioles. And welcome in, everyone, along with Tom Green, Steve Busby. Glad you could join us. And the Rangers got the dogs out tonight. They let them loose, and they hope that does the trick. But they've got a trick up their sleeve, too, and that would be Adrian Beltre. They're going to put a saddle on Adrian and try to ride him to a win tonight, but he looks like he's up to the task. He sure does, Buzzy. He's kind of downplayed going into last night's game about how hot he is, but after last night, I don't think he can downplay it. Get a couple of more home runs. And the one thing he's doing right now is he's driving the ball to right field. Both of the home runs last night were extremely well hit. Both of them were hit to right field. Over the last couple of weeks, 16 games, as a matter of fact, he's hitting over 500. He's knocking in runs, hitting home runs. What the Rangers need is not only that, but they need some other guys to chime in as well. Yeah, that they do, and uh, certainly the Rangers, uh, depending on their veteran everyday player, Adrian Beltre, and tonight they will depend on their uh, veteran starter in Colby Lewis. It'll be up to Colby if the Rangers are to indeed salvage one of this three-game series. We'll have the starting lineups in the first pitch for you, dancing all around with the dogs here at the ballpark tonight. Rangers and Orioles coming up next on Fox Sports Southwest. I know. Listen. Take the EcoBoost Challenge to see why Ford is the best in Texas. By AT&T, TV.
Check availability at 1-800-PICK-ATT. Rethink possible. Buy the all-new Mazda 3 with seamless connectivity. And by Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com. Colby Lewis out to the hill, followed by his teammates. They are getting ready to take on the Orioles before we get underway. Let's head down to the field. Emily Jones is standing by him. Well, Buzz, as you well know, Colby Lewis has been known as an innings eater for this team over the years. So the fact that he's making his 10th start and has yet to make it into the 7th is not where Colby wants to be. But he does say he's getting closer to that point. I feel better than I did. So, um... I don't really don't think about it as much, you know, like I said before, um, um, they definitely aren't thinking about it, you know, I mean, they're out there uh, not worrying about if a guy has a fake hip or not, you know, they're just trying to beat me, so um, it's just, uh, like I said before, I got to go out and be uh, a little bit more consistent and, and um, keep my team in the game as long as I can. And a 34-year-old says, you know, an elbow surgery and a hip resurfacing surgery later. He, it is going to take him a little bit longer to get to where he wants to be. And he's just waiting kind of to turn that corner. He said he's just trying to get rid of that one at bat or, or that one particular um, inning that's, that's killing him. And so he's trying to get away from that, be a little more consistent. We'll see if it can start here tonight, fellas. All right, Emily, thank you. Good stuff, Colby. And uh, hopefully he'll continue that uh streak that he has going where one up one down because he's coming off a down start so hopefully tonight will be the up one and he can build on it from here here's the Baltimore lineup that uh, Kobe Lewis will face tonight Nick Markakis leads off Manny Machado is next Nelson Cruz is the DH tonight again Adam Jones bats clean up Chris Davis at first JJ Hardy the shortstop bats sixth Jonathan Scope is in second David Lowe is in left and Caleb Joseph is catching and batting ninth We'll take a look at the Sonic scouting report for Colby. He's had nine starts this year. You mentioned, Buzz, that he's kind of alternated good starts and bad starts. He's four and four on the season. Five or more innings pitched and eight of nine starts. Still trying to go more than six innings. Had a career-high 12 strikeouts and five home runs in his last start against the O's. And that was a pretty amazing start. And first ball swinging, Mark Higgins. It's a little free hopper out to Rugnet Odor. So very quickly... One pitch and one away, and Colby is on a 27-pitch game effort here tonight. That's going. Now let's take a look at the Ranger defense. It's delivered by Break Check. Jinsu Chu in left, Leonis Martin in center, and Michael Choice in right. Mitch Borland at first. You saw Odor at second, Elvis Andrews the shortstop, Adrian Beltre at third, and Chris Jimenez is catching goal. Colby Lewis tonight. Manny Machado up there, and Lewis misses outside for ball one. You know, our scouting report, Buzz, referred back to the last start that Kobe had against the Orioles. He pitched seven innings in that start. He lost the game. The Rangers lost the game. In that game, he, had, he allowed five hits. Every one of them was a solo home run. He walked one and struck out 12. That is a line I don't think that's ever been <laughs> duplicated anywhere. Five hits, all home runs, one walk, and 12 strikeouts. Yeah. That's what it looked like. Lost the game 6-5. to five. That was a, a crazy afternoon. That was the first game of a doubleheader, if I remember correctly. It was, uh, well, you kind of had to wonder if that's the first game. What in the world is the second game going to be like? But it was a pretty normal game. Yeah, you look at just walks and strikeouts. One walk, 12 strikeouts. You'd have to assume it was a low-scoring gym. Yeah, he's got his first strikeout here as Machado got looking at that inside fastball, and Lewis sends him down for the second out. Well, he's trying to get the fastball in. He runs it in and gets the call. Machado, not a fan of that call. That's a pretty good movement on it. Lance Barrett, the home plate umpire, giving uh, Colby a little bit of a margin to work with. So two up, two down, and Nelson Cruz now will step in. Nelly handling the DH chores for the second time in this three-game series, and he fouls back that first pitch. It's nothing in one. Cruz, a 319 hitter. 
He has had a big series, four hits in the series, 21 home runs, and 55 RBI. And Colby has him down 0-2 in the count. On base percentage, up almost 39%. Well, you're talking about a, having a great year. And that fastball just inside. One ball and two strikes. Yeah, he threw that ball exactly where he tried to throw it. Tried to get Nelly to swing at that pitch up and in. Didn't get that, but he threw it exactly where he wanted to. Got him swinging. Good sharp slider. It's a 10-pitch first inning with a couple of strikeouts. And Colby Lewis sends the Orioles down in order. We played a half inning. It's Baltimore nothing. The Rangers coming up. down in order in the first inning with a couple of punch outs. Now the uh, Rangers coming back in Southwest Airlines will show you the Texas Rangers batting order for tonight. Jinsu Chu, the left fielder, will lead off and Elvis Andrews to follow. Mitch Moreland bats third, plays first. Clean up hitter is the third baseman, Adrian Beltre. Alex Rios is the DH tonight, a partial night off. Chris Jimenez back behind the plate, he's hitting six. Leonis Martin in center, Michael Joyce in right field. And batting ninth, the second baseman, Rupnet Odor. And pitching for the Orioles, right hander Chris Tillman. Our Sonic scouting report will tell you that he is 5 and 2. He's had 12 starts this year. He's 5 and 0 oh in eight road starts with a 5.51 ERA. 3 and 1, 3.21 ERA, and four career starts against the Rangers. Well, he's 5 and 0. Oh. On the road with a high ERA. And on, at home, he's got a 278 ERA and he's 0-2. Go figure that one out. <laughs> that looks like a misprint. And Shinsu Chu takes a strike. That evens things at one and one. Chu hitting at 280. Although that uh, 414 on base percentage still second in the American League. Next pitch low and inside. Two balls and a strike. Chew with half a dozen home runs and 18 RBI. Breaking ball. That catches the inside corner. It's two and two. Chew in the last 13 games against these Orioles, a 327 average with the 11 runs driven in and five round trippers. Way inside, three and two. So Chu trying to get aboard to start off the Ranger first. Elvis Andrews, the Ranger shortstop, back in there tonight. And he's waiting to be next. Gilman standing side saddle, goes into an abbreviated wide and misses outside ball four. And Chu does it again, starting off the game by drawing a walk. Yeah, Buzz, when you look at his record on the road, he's 5-0, his ERA is 551. He's had three starts on the road. Only tonight, he gave up seven runs and got a win. He 
gave up eight runs in the first inning against the Pirates and got a no decision. And then in five plus innings against Milwaukee, he gave up six runs on the road. So 21 runs on the road in those three games. That's why he's got an ERA of 551. And he had the good fortune in all three of those games to have his team score a lot of runs for him. That's why he's 5 0. Elvis takes that first pitch on the inside, going for strike one. So when he's uh, been good on the road, he's been really good. When he's been bad, he's pretty bad. He's been really bad, but <laughs> his offense has been really yeah. good. Yeah. And they just haven't scored much for him at home. And Elvis lofts one out of play down the right side. That's back into the seats. And the count moves to no balls and two strikes. We mentioned that he has a good record against the Rangers. He's pitched four times. If you take away his first start, the last three starts have been here, and he's won all three of them and pitched well in virtually all three of those ball games. Made the All-Star team last year, won 16 games. So he, he's a good young pitcher, 25 years old. Good assortment of pitches. Just off the outside corner, it's one ball and two strikes. Beautiful night here at Globe Life Park. A crowd. Filing in again, a strong south breeze blowing in from right field, 15, 18 miles an hour. And the Pooches appreciate the breeze. Well, that one's uh, just kicking back there, having a great time. <laughs> Drive to right center field, pretty well hit up the alley. Going back as Marquez is over his head. One hop off the wall. Fuel will be stopped at third as Elvis drove it to the gap in right center. And the Rangers have something going in the first, second, and third with nobody out, and the big guys coming up. Well, Elvis, Elvis hits a lot of balls in the air to right and right center field. A lot of line drives. This one gets up in the air, and no one had a chance to catch this ball. Both Jones and Marquecas are very good defensive players, but he hit that high fastball well enough to get it all the way to the warning track in right center field. Ball looks like it's carrying pretty well out in that direction, kind of like it was last night. And it's right over Marquecas's head. The other thing is the right fielder doesn't play really deep against Elvis. Chu is waiting to see what happened to that ball. And you know, there's no outs and men on second and third, so you feel pretty good about the situation. But as Chu watched that ball go over the right fielder's head, you know, he might have started towards second base a little bit sooner than that. So Mitch Moreland up there, and the uh, Orioles in an overshift. They have their second baseman, Jonathan Scope, way out in shallow right field. They're giving up the run for a chance at an out with Moreland up there, and uh, Mitch takes the pitch outside. One ball, one strike. J.J. Hardy, the shortstop, on the third base side of second. So he is not giving up the, uh, the large hole at the shortstop spot. Off speed, and that's outside. It's two and one. Mitch at 256 with the average. A couple of home runs and 21 RBI. This is an alignment buzz I don't think we've seen very often with a second baseman out in right field and the shortstop on the third base side of second base. Yeah, you're right. I That gives him a huge hole yeah. between the second baseman and the shortstop. Sure does. Probably as big a hole as you'll see. You know, Mitch hit a ball towards shortstop the other day, and, and I wonder if just that one one shot Maybe. would have uh, changed their minds a little bit. Might be. If I'm a left-hand hitter, I don't mind this shift. I got, I've got a feel that I've got a great chance to roll balls between the shortstop and the second base men with this alignment. 2-2 two -two pitch to left field. That's a base hit. Chu will score. Andrews being waved around. He will score without a throw. And Mitch Moreland comes through with a two-run single. The Rangers lead 2-0. Well, we've seen the shift take away a lot of hits from Ranger hitters, but here's a case where the shift gave a two-run single to Mitch Moreland. Did a nice job of going the other way, hitting it sharply. Right exactly where the shortstop might normally play. But J.J. Hardy was shifted toward the middle of the diamond. And this hard hit ball semi-line drive ground ball goes right through the spot that he normally might have been playing at as that that's not pitching to the shift or shifting to the pitcher very well I don't I don't think there's no. a pitch inside of Beltran you know if you're gonna if you're gonna shift like that 
a pitch away has to be off speed so that he's going to roll over on it. Exactly. I don't think you can throw him a fastball down and away, especially to Mitch, and expect him not to uh, hit the ball that way. But Rangers will certainly take it. I know Mitch will. And nobody's in the dugout's going to give it back. So Moreland at first after the two-run single. Adrian Beltre waiting the 1-0 pitch. That is off the plate inside. It's 2-0. Adrian, three home runs in the first two games of this series. That is 26th career multi-home run game last night. He's got Moreland at first. Still nobody out here in the Ranger first inning. Popped up down the right side. That is twisting into foul territory, and it drops back in the second row. Of course, Davis and Scope over there to take a look. Take a look at the Ford leaderboard. Since the start of 2011, this is against the Baltimore Orioles, Adrian Beltre, a slugging percentage of 880. Miguel Cabrera second, he's 40 points behind, and then Chu and Mike Trout. An 880 slugging percentage, and that that's not just a one series. That's going back three years. 2-1 pitch. That's going to right field, a base hit. More than a second will check in there as Markakis gets the ball back in, and the Rangers are tattooing Chris Tillman here in the early going. I mentioned a game that he had earlier in the season at Pittsburgh where he gave up eight runs in the first in one inning, one inning of work. You know, it's kind of a hanging slider up and out over the plate. That's almost in the same location as the pitch that he hit to right field for a home run last night. The other ball was up and away, not even a strike. But very good sign that you've got a very good hitter driving the ball to the opposite field like Adrian is right now. Yeah, Dave Wallace, the pitching coach, out there to have a little chat with uh, Chris Tillman and with Caleb Joseph. Now, the Rangers are doing a good job of going the other way with Tillman. Uh, Beltre did it. Moreland did it. Andrews did it. So they are uh, not trying to pull anything necessarily. They've all gotten pitches of fastballs that they can hit the other way. Beltre's might have been a, a hard slider. It's the same idea. Now here's Alex Rios who steps in hitting at 319. And off speed pitch is going to hang up high for ball one. 20 pitches already for Chris Tillman, and he has not recorded an out here in the first. Rios, three home runs, 29 RBI. That's tops on the Ranger ball club. Pretty good slider there, and it's a ball and a strike. Another statistical feature for Chris Tillman this year is in the first two innings, his ERA is nine. After the second inning, his ERA is 249. Key for him is trying to get through the first two innings and have a little trouble with it today. It's foul back. One and two. Yeah, so far this uh, ERA hasn't gone down at all in the first game. Well, right now you can't get the ERA. <laughs> That's right. You've got to get it out first. Well, Tillman, the advantage in the count. Moreland at second. Right there at the bottom of your screen, stepping off his lead. He's trailed by Adrian Beltre. Pitch to Alex Rios. His pop foul. That will reach the seats. Down the right field line. Chris Davis over to take a look, but that's back about uh, five rows. Take a quick look at the Oriole defense tonight behind Chris Dillon. Have David Lowe in left field. Adam Jones at center. Nick Markakis in right. Chris Davis at first. Jonathan Scope at second. J.J. Hardy, the shortstop. Andy Machado at third. Caleb Joseph is catching. Best defensive unit in the American League. High and tight, and the count evens now at two and two. Rangers two runs on three hits and a walk. First four hitters reaching base. Alex Rios trying to do some more damage against Tillman. And a foul ball to the right. Alex is uh, cooled off a little bit. Remember that 12-game hitting streak he had that was snapped 
in the Minnesota series on the last road trip. And he was scalding the baseball for the better part of two weeks. And he has gone on strikes here as Tillman gets the punch out. And there is one away for Chris and Jimenez. Six catcher, number 60, Chris Jimenez. It's a fastball, and right near the middle of the plate, that's one of those balls that you go back to the bench saying, I don't know how I missed that one. Might have been looking for something other than a fastball, but in any event, he did throw that ball by Alex and a long at bat. Pretty good performance for Chris Jimenez in seven games. Really hasn't had a bad game. First pitch to him, a fastball, and that splits the strike zone. No, he has not. I mentioned that Chris has kind of come up and done the same type of a thing that Kevin Kuzminoff did earlier in the season. Get a quick opportunity and get hot and get some big hits to help the ball club. And on the last road trip, he did that. Got fisted and shoots it foul to the left. And the count moves to Omen 2. Now Jimenez with a six-game hitting streak. This is his eighth start since being called up for AAA. That was on the 20th of May. Thus far, the Rangers are five and two in his previous seven starts. Morgan and Beltray out at second and first, respectively. Tillman a check of second. Now the 0-2. Loop foul down the right side and back into the seats. Jimenez being very protective of the strike zone. And he will try another 0-2 pitch. Tillman getting ready to throw his 30th pitch here in the first inning. 26-year-old right-hander from Fountain Valley, California. Back to the plate he comes. And a ground ball to short. The second they get one. Return to first, a 6-4-3 double play. Puts an end to the Ranger first. But... Adrian Beltre and company, Mitch Moreland, the two-run single. The Rangers put two on the board. As we go to the second, they lead 2-0. To it. Mark at the park night out here at Globe Live Park. Folks had uh, some 800 plus dogs uh, on parade before the ball game tonight, and it was great to great to see some of the outfits. Fortunately, it was not a real hot night out here, so most of the dogs are pretty happy about it, being dressed up a little bit. <laughs> That's a big dog. He's trying to find out. Uh, dollar hot dog night was last night. He's a little bit upset about that. Yeah, he's also upset someone's sitting in the seat, too. <laughs> <laughs> Have
Adam Jones uh, leading off for the Orioles here in the second inning takes a strike. Well, with all the dog days we've had out here, I've never seen two dogs getting any kind of an altercation. I haven't either, which is pretty good. All the different kinds of dogs. I guess people wouldn't bring their dog if they were worried about that, though. Well, you think a dog would show up and have a bad day or something? You could have a bad day. <laughs> yeah. Some of them look a lot more comfortable at the ballpark than others, too. Yeah. Two and one, the count to Adam Jones. Jones at 296 with seven home runs. He is second on the team with 33 runs driven in. Last three ball games, the Adam has really been swinging a hot bat, a seven for 14. Hits that ball sharply, but picked cleanly by Elvis. One gone. before Chris Davis steps in, let's welcome Jim Knox to the program. Jim? Oh, I appreciate it, Buzz. Anybody here from Alabama? Yeah, a big group here from Alabama tonight enjoying the rain this game. Community Corner tonight. All right, quiet it down there. There you go. Thank you very much, guys. Community Corner, we're talking about the Bobby Bragan Youth Foundation. Great foundation. It awards college scholarships each and every year. And to find out more about that, log on to bobbybragan.org. Alabama? Yeah! Rangers, yeah! there we go. Buzz? All right, Noxie, well, you got them fired up. Do they bring their dogs from Alabama? Mm -hmm. well, that'd be a long road trip. Yeah, it would be. Now, Colby Lewis has retired the first four that he has faced in order, and now facing Chris Davis. Chris, a towering home run last night. He is hitting a 232. That was his eighth round tripper of the year. Solo blast. 26 RBI for the Oriole first baseman. One ball, one strike. Now two and one. Chris, the Longview native. He'll be back uh, in the Metroplex playing a few ball games. Uh, family and friends over. Pop up on the left side. Beltre, the only Ranger over there. He's fighting the wind as he goes into foul territory. That makes the catch for out number two. Right, six, the Davis fouls two. out to Beltre. Two gone. And now J.J. Hardy will come up. Great start for Kobe Lewis. Five up, five down. He's only thrown 18 pitches. Oh, Soaring the bats pretty well the first two games of this series. They've got a tough lineup to face. A lot of good hitters in their lineup. And 17 runs and 30 hits for yeah. Baltimore in the first two games. Pretty good. First pitch to J.J. Hardy on the inside corner. And slider that got the uh, just barely came back in the front door. Hardy at 296. He is without a home run, but he has driven in 15. We'll talk about the Orioles offense. They've They've got a several, several guys, really, who haven't gotten hot yet. Machado has not gotten hot. Adam Jones has been okay, but not as hot as he can be. Chris Davis really hasn't driven the ball this year like he did the last couple of years. J.J. Hardy hasn't hit a home run yet. He has averaged 26 home runs the last three years. Matt Wieters is out of the lineup. He was swinging the bat pretty well. So they're swinging the bats pretty well, and they look like they've got some players that are due to start swinging even better. And That'll have start happening tomorrow, not tonight. Yeah, well, that would be preferable. We've already yeah. seen it in the first two games. We've actually seen enough. <laughs> they go do it somewhere yeah. else. So stop it. The 2 2 pitch. Beltre couldn't quite get to it. It's off his glove down the line for extra bases. Chu will play the carom and into second base with a two out double. Here's J.J. Hardy. Well, Adrian playing just enough off the line that. Even with the dive, couldn't quite get all of his glove on it. Came up with a lot of dirt on his uniform. Not the ball. When you dive early in the ball game, it's fairly close to the time that they watered the infield dirt, so you're liable to get a little muddier than you would later on in the ball game. That was a pretty good smash by Hardy too. He hit that ball in the good part of the bat. That was going to be a tough play, even if Adrian could get in front of it. That was a hard hit ball. And took a tough hop. Now the first base runner of the night for the Baltimore Orioles. Hardy at second base. Jonathan Scope, the second baseman up there. And the slider is just off the outer edge for ball one. 
Scope hitting at 233. And he's got some pop. He's five home runs, 17 driven in. A man who made his Major League debut at the end of last year with the Orioles. 22-year-old from uh, Curacao. Knee-high strike, evens the count. Pretty rangy second baseman, 6'2", and he's over 200 pounds. And that's not your prototypical uh, middle infielder by any means. Off the end of the bat, Beltre will cut it off. On the first, and that'll do it. So, Colby Lewis able to work around the two-out double. Hardy stranded will go to the bottom of the second inning. It's the Rangers two, the Orioles nothing. for a chance to have a show in our upcoming broadcast. That's all thanks to the good folks at AT&T. And a photo of a dog would seem to be appropriate tonight if you'd like to uh, tweet that along. Just use hashtag Southwest Fan Photo and your photo might be selected to be aired during one of our broadcasts this season. We'll have our selection a little bit later on tonight. Leonis Martin trying to bunny his way aboard to start the Rangers second and fouls it back for strike one. <laughs> well, that's I just love a good ball game. Yeah, that gives a whole new definition to a dog's <laughs> life, doesn't it? Huh? Boy, relax. That's great. Drive to right field. That is down for a hit. Marquez thought about trying to charge it and thought better of it. That ball was scalded by Leonis Martino, leadoff single. Michael Joyce will be next. And that's one of those balls that you assume it's a hit, and then you go, oh, he might have hit it too hard. The right fielder might have a chance to come in and catch this ball. And it looked like Marcakis might have a chance to catch it. But leading off an inning with nobody out, he didn't want to take a chance on trying to catch it. Having him get by it with Martin's speed it probably would have ended up at third base. So he decided to play it conservatively on a hop and hold him to a single. First pitch to Michael Joyce. It's a knee-high strike. Nothing in one. Michael at 202. He appeared last night as a pinch hitter in that ninth inning and gave the last out of the ball game. Three home runs, 19 driven in for Choice. And the next pitch right at the knees on the inside corner. Nothing in two. Michael with the... Uh, Sore ankle for Shinsu Chu has been getting quite a bit of playing time either at uh, DH or in the outfield spot when uh, Chu has been given a partial day off. 
Michael getting the start tonight as Ron Washington wanted to get Alex Rios off his feet from playing defensively. There's Shinsu and that ankle probably a little bit worse for wear after being hit in his right ankle last night. He's got two sore ones now. There's Martin. Has to have his running gloves, I guess is what he was waiting for. <laughs> He's ready to go over there at first base. One ball, two strikes to count. And going outside, two and two. Occasionally you'll see a runner grip something in his hand. And the reason some runners do that is you have a tendency as you slide to jam your the heel of your hand into the ground as you slide, and you can sprain your wrist, have a bone bruise in the heel of your hand. There goes Martin, and the pitch is fouled back. And the feeling is if you're holding something in each hand when you slide, it, you would tend to keep those hands off the ground a little bit more than with nothing in your hand. In this case, with gloves on your hand, I guess that's just a mild form of protection. Oh, the rash of uh, dislocated fingers and torn tendons of guys sliding in head first. Any protection you can have, it, it would be certainly worthwhile. Sure. Going outside, now the count is full. So with nobody out, I would imagine you'll see uh, Leonis Martin setting sail for second. See if Michael Choice can uh, get on to join Leonis. He's at Odor. The number nine hitter is going to be next. Now, one thing you don't do is you don't steal off Chris Tillman. Didn't give up a stolen base in a long time. Only one has tried this year. On the run, the pitch is popped up behind home plate. That'll be back into the uh, club level just below us and we'll come back and try it again. Carlos Gomez is the only base runner to try to steal a base. This really doesn't count because it's a 3 2 count. He's counting on the hitter to put it in play. Last year he gave up one stolen base in 33 starts. Yeah. How about that? That's uh, that's keeping people close. Tillman a belt high set. Martin on the move again. The pitch line. Deep left field. Going back as low. He is at the track. Goodbye. Michael Choice, a line drive home run into the Oreo bullpen. The Rangers lead it four to nothing. Got a nice little look right there to find the power that Michael has. Where he can just kind of reach out and hit a line shot 400 feet to left center field. That was a good at bat. It was a patient at bat. He took a couple of strikes. Then he eyeballed the count to three balls and two strikes. Got a good pitch to hit. Trying to throw it down and away. Didn't quite get it down and away, though. He got it near the middle of the plate. And he paid the price for that one. Nice swing by Michael and a hard hit home run to left field. That is a strong young man, Michael Choice. For sure. That ball had very little carry on, very little hang time on it. Didn't get very high. Carried a long way. Oh, a 4 0 Ranger lead, their first home run of the night. That was on the eighth pitch of the at bat to Michael Choice. Shinsu Chu takes a strike, and the count is 1 1. Excuse me, Odor. Jumping ahead of myself by a hitter. Rubin at a 274. Makes that breaking ball low and in. The estimated distance on uh, Michael Choice's home run, 403 feet. And had it not been for the back wall of the bullpen, then it'd still be rolling. Inside, three balls and a strike. Odor trying to get aboard to keep this thing going here in the second inning. Top of the order, Shinsu Chu waits to be next. And just like in the first inning, pitch count. Relatively high for Tillman. And ball four. Getting higher. Double play really bailed him out in the first inning. Helped his pitch count out, but he's at 45 pitches right now with nobody out in the second inning. Buck Showalter not, uh, not going out for pizza. Checking in with the bullpen to see who's, uh, who's first up. So two walks in the game. Odor now at first. Still nobody out, and the other walk went to the man in your picture. Shinsu Chu, the start of the game, 
with that walk. Came around to score on Mitch Moreland's base hit. High and tight for ball one. Well, you know, you know, Buzz, that you're having a little problem with your command when you walk Odor. That was his first walk. Well, it had to happen sometime. Right? It had to happen sometime. <laughs> That's right. That yeah, ball two is high. 62 at bats, and that is his first walk. Well, they're keeping that hat on his head. Well, let's go down uh, while we have a break here. Checking with Emily Jones. Em? Another first for Rootnet O'Dor today as he did his first on camera interview in English. Good I am him. pleased to report that he did an outstanding job. Uh, Elena Ornelas, the uh, Rangers translator, was on hand just in case, but Rudy did a fine job and um, it should be coming to a television and computer screen near you very soon, guys. Very good, good for him. He was man. very, I was very proud of him. He's been working really hard on it. He was a little bit nervous, but. He pulled it off quite nicely. Good. Well, I, I think a lot of the kids would say that the pressure of doing their first interview in English probably provides more pressure to them than going out and playing the yeah. game itself. Yeah. And great for him. 2 old pitch is inside. Three balls and no strikes. And I played winter baseball in Venezuela for five years and never would have dreamed of doing any type of an interview in Spanish. So that is something he should be proud of. Good for him. 3-0 pitch, a call strike, Chu on his way to first, and home plate umpire Lance Barrett said, come on back, let's do one more anyway. Wow. He was in the vicinity. <laughs> now, David Murphy had, used to have a lot of pitches. We called it the Murphy zone, which seemed to be a few inches outside. That ball's starting to develop into the Chu zone up there. And that wasn't close enough to be in the Chu zone. So back-to-back -back walks. And two aboard with nobody out. Elvis coming out. Brad Brock, right hand, uh, loosening very quickly in that Oreo bullpen. Now, Shin Su is definitely going to make you throw a strike. And Tillman is battling that right now. He's thrown 28 strikes and 22 balls, 50 pitches with nobody out in the second inning. Well, it's been a labor for him tonight. Elvis had the Gap double to right center field. His first time up. Pulls one into the left field. A base hit. Martin around third. He will score without a throw. Or excuse me, Odor will score without a throw. And the Rangers lead five to nothing. Elvis Andrews, two for two, with an RBI. After the home run, two straight walks set up a nice rally. It's still a nice rally. Elvis has increased the rally with an RBI single, and Buck Showalter is going to make a pitching change. Yeah, that's going to be it. As Elvis, with that base hit, has driven Chris Tillman from the ball game. So Buck out to uh, call for the right-hander, Brad Brock. And that'll do it for Tillman. One inning plus five hitters here in the second. He's uh, been charged with five runs. He has two people aboard that are his responsibility. Pitching change underway, much to the delight of the canines in attendance. Back after this on Fox Sports Southwest.
favorite mobile phone or tablet. You get live look-ins, instant replay, scores, stats, audio, a free MLB.tv game of the day, and a lot more. Download on the App Store or visit TexasRangers.com today. Now, Chris Tillman gone after a grand total of 11 hitters. And Brad Brock, the 28-year-old, on the hill now. Mitch Moreland takes inside for ball one. And his numbers on the season, this will be his ninth ball game. 13 innings, 14 strikeouts. But opponent's batting average of a little bit over 300. First and second. A pretty good change up there. Had Mitch way out in front. One ball and one strike. Rangers with two across, or three across in the inning. And a leadoff single from Leonis Martin. Michael Choice, a two-run home run. Then walks to Odor and Chu. And Elvis Andrews, an RBI single. Pulled on the right side. Diving stop by Davis. He goes to second. They get one. And that's it. He's done Boy, that every game. Another terrific play by Chris Davis. A little bit slow getting up. I think he might have, uh, again, knocked the wind out of himself. Well, we've seen him make a play just like that in, in all three games. Going to his right. He shows the range. He's got the long arm. He's got the hands, too. Those balls don't always take a great hop for him when he dives. They seem to go right in the middle of his glove every time. And he doesn't have to flip it to the pitcher. He gets one of the lead runners. A little bit screened out by the runner on that play as well. Still made the play. Well, first and third now as Su Chu advanced 90 feet. Here's Adrian. And he takes inside for ball one. Beltre single to right his first time up. Beltre continuing to swing a hot bat. And he's... Uh, now up to 310. Eight home runs. And a rip and a miss. That ball sinking down and in at 92. Well, the Rangers putting some offense together tonight, and uh, it had to turn around some point here at home. They were hitting just 250 as a team in this ballpark. Nice backhanded stop by Caleb Joseph, the catcher. That was the fifth lowest average in the American League coming into play here tonight. And that's, boy, that is something you don't associate with Ranger teams in the last decade no, or so. No, not at all. They, they generally pound the ball in this ballpark. Two and one, Adrian Whiting. To third. The second for one. On to first to double play. Second double play of the night. Turned by the Orioles. So the Rangers, second comes to an end. With three runs on three hits and one left. Michael Choice, the big blast, his fourth home run of the year. We're going to the third. It's the Rangers five and the Orioles nothing.
It is dog night here at the ballpark. 800 dogs taking part. And see uh, some of the interesting ones. What do we have here? Well, we have a bird. Bird. It's a plane. And it's a Texas Rangers home run. All right, there we go. Let's check it out, Jeff, real quick. There's the plane right down there. Texas Ranger home run. Let's move on real quick. We got a lookalike Ranger captain, right? Carmelita Lupita. Uh -huh. <laughs> Very nicely done. And the biggest dog in the house is who? Whoa. Wilbur. Wilbur weighs? 150. All right, big Wilbur in the house. All right, we have more dogs to come. Next inning, we're going to try to get in one of the unique tricks of the night. You, you don't want to miss this, Buzz. That's a tease, I guess, a tease. I kind of like Rangers Captain Mini Me. Well, when you hear the name of a dog... What? Carmelita Lapita? Yeah. You don't think of that giant dog. <laughs> and when you see that little Carmel, you see a little Carmelita? That's definitely not a Wilbur right there. <laughs> That's a Carmelita all the way. Yeah. Look at that poor dog. <laughs> There's a great looking dog. Oh, man. People love to show off their kids. They love to show off their dogs, too, boy. And ripping one down to the right field corner, David Lowe, and he is on his way. For extra bases, Michael Choice gets the ball back in. So two hits off of Colby Lewis tonight. They've both been doubles. J.J. Hardy, a two-out double in the second. Now David Lowe starting off the third with his third double of the year. Colby trying to throw that slider a little bit more in than that, probably. That one caught the middle of the plate, and Lowe took advantage of it. The ball hard by Michael Choice in right field for that double. Now Chris Jimenez out to uh, have a little talk with his 34-year-old right-hander, Colby Lewis. Caleb Joseph steps in, hitting at 132. But he does bring in a uh, three-game hitting streak to play here tonight. This is third consecutive start against the Rangers. Colby's first pitch is a strike on the inside corner. Caleb, three out of nine in the uh, first couple of games of this series. He has driven in a run and scored a couple of times. And a good pitch to the outside corner for Colby. Took something off and he's ahead, nothing in two. David Lowe behind Lewis, getting his lead from second. The, uh, Elvis Andrus, the Rangers shortstop, and a dog in him back to second base. 0-2 pitch. And a fly ball to right field. That's going to chase Michael Choice back. He makes the catch, tagging at second, moving over to third. David Lowe, he will make it easily. Well, the fly ball deeply enough uh, hit by Caleb Joseph to get the runner over. Now Lowe at third with one out for the top of the order, Nick Markakis. And let's take time here very quickly for a Mazda game break with John Radigan. John. All right, John, thank you. Well, how about Danaka? He is <laughs> off to, uh, I would say, a great start. Nine and, uh, nine and one, I believe he is. They're coming into the game. If you look at the earned run average leaders, Tanaka was number one at 206. Darvish was number two at 208. Wow. And Tanaka's probably went down just a notch. So the two young Japanese pitchers are one, two in the league so far in earned run average. That'll be some kind of matchup if yeah. that works out, Darvish yeah. and Tanaka, boy. There will be reporters from all over the world to watch that one. I was just thinking the same thing. And can you imagine what the press is going to be like if those oh, two match man. up like that? That would be that would be tremendous. One old pitch and Mark Akis takes it high. It's two balls and no strikes. Mark Akis began things by grounding out to second base. He grounded out on the first pitch that he saw. Nine game hitting streak. Nick, a 395 hitter over those nine games. It's the second longest streak in the American League right now. Colby working from the stretch. And hits the outside corner about knee high. Arcakis earlier this year had an 18 game hitting streak. So he has been pretty much the model of consistency. 
You know, we talked about him last night, Tom, but uh, Marquecas is one of those guys that as long as there's health there, you can pencil him in for having good years every single year. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a dependable, solid guy. No doubt he hits what you said last night, and I agree 100%. Not flashy. Orioles are, at this stage, with the other guys they have in the lineup, more comfortable using them in a leadoff spot than a middle-of-the-order kind of guy. But, you know, when you've got Cruz, Adam Jones, and Chris Davis, that's not necessarily a knock on a hitter. <laughs> yeah. And let's face it, a good leadoff hitter means a lot to a lineup. So he's got a batting average of over 400 in the first inning. So he generally gets the team off to a good start. Well, goes down and picks that one right off his front knee and hits it foul. I don't know how in the world he got a bat on that ball. <laughs> you mentioned earlier uh, in last night's game. Boy, well, that's a great looking box here. <laughs> hey, my little buddy. Marquez has had a three-year stretch where he averaged 07 09 320 home runs and 100 RBI. So there, there has been a time where he was more of a middle of the order guy. Mm -hmm. Lewis okays the sign and sets another 2-2. Two -two. High in the air to right field. That's hit pretty well. Choice is back. He is at the wall. He jumps and it's gone. Nick Marquez, a two-run home run. He is fifth of the year. And the Ranger lead is cut to five to two. That's almost the exact same pitch and the exact same home run he hit earlier in this series. Fastball up and in, hit it high and got it out of the ballpark. He's trying to throw it up and in, but that ball comes, it's up, but that ball comes back more toward the middle of the plate than he wanted it to. In fact, exactly in the middle of the plate. Had some movement on it, but the movement actually hurt him right there. Yeah. It kept the ball from maybe jamming him on the inside corner to being right in the middle of the plate. Now, Colby Lewis back to Manny Machado misses outside with ball one. A 368 foot home run for Nick Marcakis, plated David Lowe also. And Machado pops it up, foul. That's uh, right below us. It definitely wasn't a tape measure home run, that's for sure. Actually, just a fly ball that went a row back in the right field seats. Machado called out on strikes first time he faced Colby Lewis tonight. That's off the outside corner. It's two and one. Well, the Orioles now 61 home runs as a team this year. Foul away to the right. Machado has the count even at two balls and two strikes. Machado three out of ten in this series. Starting to turn things around. He is uh, on nine for 37 on their uh, road trip. This is the last game of a ten-game trip for the Orioles. Check swing and the pitch all the way to the backstop. The appeal down at first and no swing. Colbreth down there making the call, and uh, the count is now full. A roving camera, an RF camera around the uh, periphery of the stadium, showing you different angles that almost every seat in Globe Live Park has a great shot of the action. Payoff pitch. A little number down the first baseline will stay in foul territory, and we'll come back and try it again. Colby, the Bakersfield, California native. Rubs up that new baseball back on top of the mound. Into the wind, another 3-2 pitch. That ball is hammered, but pulled foul down the left field line. That's going into the second deck. And rebounds and all the way down back on the field. That might have hung enough, in fact, so much that he pulled it foul. It's a spinner. Up and in, and Kobe's lucky that one went to the left of the foul pole in left field. That's definitely not where Kobe was going to throw that slider. Now throw him a good one right here. And just missed the outside corner. Machado taking it. Draws the one out walk. 
Goldie Lewis not uh, particularly thrilled with the outcome of that attack. First walk surrendered by Colby tonight and brings up Nelson Cruz. That's an extremely tough part of a lineup. It compares pretty favorably to any lineup in baseball, really, when you look at Machado, Cruz, Jones, and Davis. Four guys that can take you deep. Cruz hitting 319, Jones close to 300. A lot of good hitters in the Oriole lineup, and you're going to see most of them right now. Nelly Cruz went down swinging the first time. Got Machado at first, one out, a couple of runs across here in the third inning. And that pitch inside from Lewis. Three eighteen, the average for the major league home run and RBI leader, Nelson Cruz. Colby's next pitch. And we go after a slider. One ball, one strike. But Cruz hitting almost 500 on this trip for the Orioles. Get a good look. That that was a good slider. Downward break on it. Coming into play tonight, though, uh, Nelly Cruz, 14 of 30 in the previous nine games of this trip for Baltimore. One ball and one strike. Fastball and uh, really Cruz a little tardy on the swing. It's one and two. But Colby so far has been able to not only out guess but out execute Nelson Cruz. Cruz waiting, hitting out of that wide open stance. Lewis sets at the belt, the one two pitch. Got him swinging. Good slider down and away. And he was able to get Nelson Cruz for the second time on strike. Well, there's several right hand hitters in the Oriole lineup that are susceptible to that slider with two strikes out of the strike zone. It's just a matter of Kobe executing that pitch and not throwing it in a way that it hangs near the middle of the plate. And that's the pitch that can really hurt you. But when he gets two strikes on several of these right hand hitters if he can execute that pitch then he's got a great chance to get them to fish for it. Now well, here's Adam Jones. Maybe another guy that's susceptible if you can throw it out. Yeah you just got to get it out there. Don't make a mistake with it. There's one that was a get me over slider that uh, got over 0-1. Adam Jones, a ground ball to short, although a very hard hit ground ball, but still an 0 for 1 tonight. 295 the average for the Orioles center fielder. Machado, a modest lead at first. It was to the plate. A nice job of blocking the ball by Chris Jimenez. Rangers leading 5 to 2. They have out hit the Orioles 6 to 3 so far. In the top of the third inning. A one on and two out. Slowly hit up the middle. And a little backhand flip by Elvis to Odor. That'll do it. Orioles get a pair on uh, Nick Marcakis' two run home run. A strand a runner. And as we go to the bottom of the third, Alex Rios set to lead things off for the Rangers. It's 5 2 Texas.
Texas Rangers baseball on Fox Sports Southwest is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com. Well, here's Alex Rio starting things off against Brad Brock, the uh, reliever that came in for Chris Tillman last inning. And Alex uh, pops one foul and out of play. The count moves to no balls and two strikes. Tillman came on after, or I should say, Brock came on after Tillman had uh, given up three runs and had nobody out in the second inning. Had two runners aboard, and Brock came on and got a couple of ground balls, the second of which resulted in an inning ending double play. Alex Rios a strikeout, the first at bat he had tonight. That was in the first inning. He gets fisted and pops one foul. That will be back uh, well, about 10 rows or so. Still 0 and 2. Alex at 317 now with the average. He is two out of eight thus far against the Orioles in this series. You go back over the last 14 ball games, though. Rios has been extremely hot. 386 is batting average. Check swing on the pitch down and away. It's one and two. Alex getting a partial night off tonight. And he was asked about that on the just completed road trip. The range. He said, yeah, it's. It's nice to get off your feet, but I'd rather be playing in the outfield. <laughs> Got him swinging. Pretty good breaking ball from Brock, and Rios down on strikes for the second time tonight. One away for Chris Jimenez. Brock's come in and does, done a pretty nice job. The Rangers have five runs in two innings. They had men on first and second, and one out, men on first and second, and nobody out in the second inning. Couldn't add to their lead, so it's nice to have five runs in the first two innings. Could have been even better. But two double plays, one to end the first, one to end the second, stemmed the tide a little bit. Brock came in and got a double play to end the second inning on Adrian Beltre. Chris Jimenez shoots one foul past Gary Pettis down the left field line. It is nothing and one. Jimenez grounded into a double play to end the first inning for the Rangers. Well, Chris now hitting at an even 400. Facing Brad Brock, who has uh, retired all three hitters that he's faced. And he gets the outside corner. It's nothing in two. Well, with the uh, draft going on, the free agent draft, or I should say the uh, amateur draft going on tonight, I'll tell you about one of the stories. Brad Brock, a 42nd round pick by the uh, Padres back in 2008 out of Monmouth College in New Jersey. So it can happen. Yeah, he's got pretty okay. good arm. He's popped his fastball 92, 94 miles an hour. He's got plenty of arm strength, a little bit of a deceptive arm angle that he throws at. Well, definitely more guys get to the big leagues the higher your pick, but you can find someone from late in the draft that's gone on to be a big league star, and there's quite a few of them. Kenny Rogers comes to mind for mm -hmm. sure for the Rangers. Yep. But Kenny was picked. I don't even remember what the round was. 39th round, 49th round, something like that. Mike Piazza. Right. Much later than that, even, I think. Well, Chris Jimenez fouling that down off his front foot. And he's going to wait for the uh, the pain to subside. That may be sometime this weekend. Still no balls, two strikes. Yeah, there was an interesting list of uh, Hall of Famers that uh, considering their, their draft status. And uh, they had Piazza on there as one of the guys. I'm going to say he was like 48th round or something like that. But uh, there were quite a few guys that were 30, 35, 40 rounds, 40th sure. round pick. Well, it doesn't matter what round you're picked, you have a chance. It doesn't matter what school you've gone to. Scouts will find you. Mm hmm. Tonight, the 15th pick in the draft was Sean Newcomb. He's a left hand pitcher. The Angels picked him from the University of Hartford. He's only the second player ever picked in the top 10 rounds of the draft from the University of Hartford. Jeff wow. Bagwell was the other one. So it may not be a hotbed of high draft choices, but in any given year, it can happen. Yeah. 
So basically, if you're playing somewhere, whether it's the high school level or the college level, and you have the talent to be drafted, someone will find you. They might miss you in high school, but if you go on to play in college, they'll find you then. But don't give up the dream. Dude, too, is hit like a shot <laughs> off the glove of Machado and out in the left field. Well, Chris Jimenez just hit a bullet that was a sinker. Had some overspin on that thing, and Machado more or less getting out of the way. That's going to be a base hit for Jimenez. Machado feels this ball hit his glove and then looks in his glove just in <laughs> case it went in the glove. He's not too sure. Watch him look in his glove. Nope, it's not in there. Yeah, and for all the you, you little leaguers in here, get in front of the ball. No. Uh, that's not the one you want to get in no, front do of. do not uh, do that. You, to, <laughs> you learn that as time goes on, which ones you can get in front of and which ones you're better off not. Yep, I used to tell my kids that. If that ball's hit hard, don't get in front of it. <laughs> I mean, there'll be a time where you might have to do it with if you're playing in the World Series with yeah. a man on third base in a tie game. But in a Little League game, if that ball is hit like that, a one-hop smash, get out of the way. <laughs> And if, the team takes if, low. if the coach tells you to get in front of that ball, tell him you're going to get someone to hit a fungo at him and let him get in front of that ball. See if he can do it. Now, kids, now don't tell your coach that. It's, <laughs> that's just, a, just an illustration, yeah. for Mr. Green. <laughs> <laughs> now there are balls. Obviously, you get you should get in front of the ball if it's a ball that you can handle and you're sure. comfortable with. We're talking about the one-hop smash. So you're in the little league and you're a an 11 year old and the biggest 12 year old in the league comes up the best player in the league and he hits his he hits a hard one hop smash at you. That's the one I'm talking about getting out of the way of not the dribbler or if Chris Jimenez does this to you. Yeah if he hits a ball 98 miles an hour on one hop you know, make an effort to catch it. I'm not saying dive out of the way and duck try to get your glove up and catch it but don't block that ball with your chest. That one was 96 miles an hour off the bat. One thing if it hits you in the chest, but pretty <laughs> tough to gauge exactly where that ball is going to bounce, and it could hit you in the face. And Leonis Martin, a rip and a miss. It's two and two. And the thing that happens when a when a little boy is young like that, you get hit by a one hop smash in the face. You might not want to play baseball yeah. anymore. Yeah, very true. So safety is the most important thing. Those guys look like they know all about that. Yeah, Those are some guys that play some baseball right there. If not, they sure look like it. Martin fouls went out of play. Yeah, and always remember how to talk your parents into some snacks too. <laughs> you say please, and you get many more snacks that way. Well, they've each got a glove. There you go. So they're definitely they've definitely come prepared. <laughs> One guy's snacking, the other guy's his wingman. He's protecting him. And Mark, switch off. Mark Holtz used to tell me you can't be a broadcaster if you don't eat in the press dining room like a broadcaster. And you can't be a ball player if you can't come to the ballpark and have a hamburger or a hot dog. Still two and two to Leonis. Martin uh, single to right field his first time up. He had a rocket out there and, and he trotted around as Michael Choice left the yard. His fourth home run of the year. Right now, Martin up there with Chris Jimenez at first. One out in the bottom of the third inning. Foul back. Although I say this, Buzz, the ball players today are eating a lot differently than we used to yeah, eat. <laughs> they sure are. <laughs> we ate a lot of hot dogs and hamburgers, and there's nothing wrong with that. But nowadays, they have basically a nutritionist on hand every day. They have a chef on hand every day. And in any given moment that you're at the ballpark as a player you can order pretty much whatever you want and they will make it and bring it to you. Brown ball to Davis he goes the second they get one the return not in time. He was able to leg out the return throw. Out at second on the fourth is Chris Jimenez. So he is erased. And Martin with his good speed now at first base in two outs for Michael Joyce. Chris Davis has definitely had a lot of opportunities on balls hit to him in this series and he's handled them flawlessly and showed a strong accurate arm. He's had a number of balls where he's thrown to the shortstop at second base very well too. First pitch to Joyce. The fastball right down through there. 
our AT&T U-verse Rewind tonight. Michael Joyce on a 3-2 pitch. First time up, got a hanging slider from Chris Tillman. And scattered the folks out in the Oriole bullpen. Fourth home run of the year for the 25-year-old Ranger. Well, Michael now with four home runs, 21 RBI. Batting mark up to 208 as he faces Brad Brock. There goes Leonis Martin. The pitch is inside. The throw to second is not in time. And Leonis Martin, a hard slide safely into second base with the theft. That was a nice throw by Caleb Joseph, the catcher. Almost an impossible ball to catch and throw. But he does a very nice job of trying to pull it off. The ball is way inside. And he reached for it. Watch him reach way down and in. Ball almost hit. Choice. Transfer it quickly. Throw it accurately. Now he doesn't get the out at second base, but it doesn't diminish the nice play that he made. Ron Washington out there talking to Lance Barrett. And uh, Tim Bogart saying, no. Can't really tell from the replay, and it was whether the ball hit Michael Choice or not, whether the pitch hit him or not. And that's a reviewable play, but uh, you saw the reaction that Tim Bogar had. And it's kind of iffy. And right there on that front leg might have been the uh, best chance for a, a hit by pitch. Leonis going to third, the throw, and they've got him this time. Well, Martin with two outs trying to swipe second and third. He got second safely, was shot down by Caleb Joseph trying to swipe third. Nothing going for the Rangers on to the fourth, 5 2 Texas. Tonight, performed by Beans. Jeremy, what are we going to attempt? In honor of uh, Tom Greaves' two home runs and 10 cent beer night in Cleveland <laughs> 40 years ago, she's going to balance two things one for each home run, one of them being a beer, just for you, Tag. All right, here we go. Let's see, let's see, Beans. Here we go. Balance, balance, balance. Good job on the beer. Good job. Good job. Got the dog on the nose. Look at Here we that. go, Beans. Steady, steady. Look at that. Steady. All right. Do it, Jeremy. There we go. Oh, almost. <laughs> hey, good attempt, though. That wasn't the There we go. Fault. Not a bad. <laughs> An error on Jeremy. We'll get that. Good okay. Like <laughs> good job. We'll try to get it right in another <laughs> inning or two. Okay, there Great you go. Great job. All right, way to go. <laughs> no forfeit there. You got that one. That's great. Get, a, get the dog, and the dog gets a dog, and gets to wash it down with a beer, too. That's, that's good. 
0-2 the count to Chris Davis. Colby Lewis back to the plate, and Davis fouls off the next pitch. There it is. The dog did the, the dog did the dog's part yep. on that one. That's all yep. I can say. Dog's wondering, am I still going to get it? Yep. Sure am. Another 0-2 is coming. Line to right field. Michael Joyce coming over. He'll play it on a long hop. And Chris Davis, a bullet for a base hit to lead off the fourth inning. That ball had some top spin on it, it looked like. Kind of a hooking line drive. Michael's playing pretty deep, obviously, for Davis. A hard hit, sinking line drive bounced in front of him. Fortunately, it didn't have backspin on it and get up in the air a little bit because he hit it on the good part of the bat, that's for sure. Well, that is the fourth hit of the night for the Orioles against uh, Colby Lewis. That's the first one that hasn't gone for extra bases. They had had two doubles and a home run previously. One on, nobody out. And J.J. Hardy, the shortstop, takes a strike. Hardy doubled into the left field corner his first time to the plate. He was the first base runner of the ball game for Baltimore. And J.J. with the average back up to an even 300. Colby. In there quickly ahead. No balls and two strikes. Infield looking for the double play grounder. Maybe a step around to the left side. Nice job again by Chris Jimenez. Sliding to his right to block that pitch in the dirt. One ball and two strikes. Colby just passing the uh, 60 pitch plateau. That is uh, 61st. 41 strikes, 20 balls. One and two, the count as Lewis sets. And he popped him up. That's where he wants to keep that slider buzz. That Odor handles that easily. That's one out. Yeah, exactly. Make them reach for it. Don't let them take their good swing at it. No one gone. And Jonathan Scope, the second baseman, will be next. Well, you can see the difference. Uh, that slider, a lot of downward tilt to it when he gets it down and away like that to right handers. And that's a, a very good slider. The hangers that we've seen tonight have very little downward break. More or less spin and maybe move uh, horizontally a bit. Scope, a ground ball to third, his first time. He pops it up. And this will be Elvis's turn out there at short. Two gone. Back-to-back -back pitches and a couple of air balls. Now David Lowe. Left fielder David Lowe. Well, folks, Fox Sports Southwest and Southwest Airlines are teaming up for a Rangers cap giveaway for the first 15,000 fans. That's coming up Monday, June 9th. We catch the Rangers' final game against the Cleveland Indians and snag the only baseball cap giveaway this season. Tickets are available at TexasRangers.com. Well, two outs with Chris Davis at first. David Lowe doubled into the right field corner his first time, and he takes way outside for ball one. Lowe hitting at 189 for the year. This is second straight start in uh, left field for Buck Show Walters Club. Takes a strike to even things. Well, now with a modest three game hitting streak after that two bagger. Came over from uh, Kansas City in an offseason trade. Colby just missed down and away. It's two and one. A trade back in uh, December the 18th said Danny Valencia over to uh, the Royals in exchange for David Lowe. Lowe was kind of a, a fifth outfielder for the Royals. The Royals didn't feel like they needed him. They needed some backup at third base. Yeah, it was kind of an even trade for two teams that were looking for a guy at a different position. Good fastball for a strike, two and two.
Well, Daniel Valencia actually was getting a chance to play third base in Kansas City. They sent Mike Moustakis to the minor leagues, but then he got hurt and they had to call Moustakis right yeah. back. Dolby okays the sign and sets at the belt. 2 2 pitch, that's popped He's up. Got him popping up. He does. Backing out, shallow left center field. It's Elvis to make the grab. And a leadoff single followed by three pop ups, and Kobe Lewis works out of the fourth. No runs a hit, one left after three and a half. Rangers five, Orioles two. In the bottom of the fourth inning, our furry friends on hand having a, a very nice dog's night out. Some 800 dogs with their uh, their masters out here tonight. Good turnout, boy. It seems like the bark at the park has grown every year. Yeah, they've had it. Seems like 800 was our is our biggest one. Yeah. Well behaved dogs too. Bottom of the fourth will begin with Michael Choice, who was left standing at home plate as Leonis Martin was uh, thrown out trying to steal third base to end the third inning. And then a breaking ball from Brad Brock is in for strike one. And how about three things about Michael Choice you need to know? Tenth overall pick in the 2010 draft out of UTA by uh, Oakland. 392, a career average. He chops one out to short. J.J. Hardy, a double clutch, and the throw, and uh, Chris Davis can't dig it out, so Michael Joyce is aboard. Well, that's a rare error. That's only the second error that Hardy has made this year. He's a gold glover. Won his second gold glove last year. He might have been a little bit surprised by yeah. how quickly Michael Joyce was getting down the line right here. Now, right there, he looked up. He said, whoa, he's getting there in a hurry. Yeah, I didn't get a good grip on it. I got to fire it. Chris Davis almost bailed him out at first with a tremendous pick and a stretch at the same time. Look at that. Ball hitting his glove, but he couldn't quite hang on to it. Nice try by Davis at first base. So the error for the Orioles, the error on J.J. Hardy, Orioles just their 28th error of the year. And slapping one down the left field line, but slicing it out of play is Rugnet Odor. Odor drew a walk and scored in the second inning. Rugnet at 274, a home run, 11 driven in. He's up there with Michael Choice at first. Nobody out in the bottom of the fourth. Rangers trying to add to their 5-2 lead. Ed Brock making uh, 
Michael Choice get back. Robinson Chirinos. The guy's sitting on the end of the bench. Having a pretty good time down there. When you're leading, you always have a better time. One ball and one strike. Odor hitting safely in uh, eight of his last 11 ball games. Remember the uh, road trip? Well, he was just on fire. Had that big five RBI game in Detroit. Chops this one foul, and the count moves to one and two. Had two triples in that game. A four-hit afternoon. Anytime you get your name mentioned in the same breath with Al Kaline and Rogers Hornsby, <laughs> you've done something pretty special. Now Brock ready, a check of first. And the one-two pitch. Out of play to the left. Well, you're quickly finding out the folks on the uh, left field side of the ballpark around the dugout or just beyond. With a door up there, be aware of balls coming in there. He slaps a lot of balls foul, protecting home plate. And they get down there in a hurry. Good point to where it hit. Hit right between them in the empty chair. That's some good fortune. It's one of those balls that's hit hard enough that if you don't see it or you pick it up late, you're going to have a hard time getting out of the way. Now he turns on one. <laughs> and I mean turned on it. Hit in the second deck down there. That thing had to go uh, four or 500 feet when you consider the height of it. Long arcing foul ball. Well, still look back to that ball that he hit in Houston into the second deck as yeah. a ball that he really put it. You wouldn't think a guy that is not a big guy, although he's put together pretty well. He's not tall, but he's solidly built. But he put a charge in that one. He hit that one with the big guys in him. Up the middle, and A.J. Hardy turns that into a double play. Well, a Taylor made double play once Hardy got it in his glove. He stepped on the bag and threw on to first. That is the third double play tonight turned by the Orioles. Two gone, base is empty, and back to the top of the order. Folks, we'd like to invite you to watch Chevy Hometown Kids every Saturday morning at 10 o'clock right here on Fox Sports Southwest, where it's not about the score, it's about the experience. Jin Su Chu chase, uh, facing uh, Brad Brock for the first time. Takes strike one. Chu against Chris Tillman walked both times. Walked leading the game off and came around to score. He walked with nobody out in the second and was stranded at third base. Rip in a foul ball. Nothing and two the count. and has spelled that I've seen his average drop some 30 points in the last couple of weeks of play. Check swing and he appealed down to third. Uh, Jim Reynolds saying no, no swing on that. One ball, two strikes. Now Brock ready once again. The one-two pitch. Got him swinging. Now the strikeout and the double play take care of the Rangers here in the fourth inning. One error and nobody left. We're going to the fifth. Rangers five, Orioles two.
August 26th, and enter to win free Rangers tickets plus a VIP experience. Visit otbfanzone.com for more details. The captain dog. No, that's he's a horse. I'll take it back. Rangers captain enjoying bark at the park tonight and coming to join us. Uh, no dog in his own right. He is the uh, doctor of defense, Mark McElroy. Matt, thanks for joining us. Uh, appreciate having. Uh, we're able to talk about a lead here. Well, yes. The first time we've been able to do that on this homestand. It's been a minute, yes. It's, <laughs> that's a good thing. They jumped out early. I like that, being aggressive. Elvis swinging a good bat. Uh, Michael Choice uh, going yard today. I like it. Down the right field line, that will slice and go back into the seats. Caleb Joseph, the leadoff hitter, finds himself now even in the count. One ball, one strike. You know, Mac, you and I on the road trip saw some offensive outbursts, and they were able to sustain it. It looks like tonight, Rangers got off to that five runs in the first two innings, and they've been shut down since. Is that a source of concern for you? You know, it looks to me as though they're not being as aggressive as they were on the road. I mean, while they were on the road, first, second, third pitch, if there was something good in the zone or around the zone, they were swinging and not missing. And right now, in, in this homestand, it looks as though they're just taking taking more pitches and kind of waiting maybe for that perfect pitch as opposed to going up there being aggressive. And I'm not saying swing at everything, but right. on that road trip, man, if it was anywhere close to the plate, they didn't miss it. Yeah, I, I guess the natural question that people would want to know is, how does that happen? You know, I wish I had an answer for that. <laughs> I, I, I have no idea. It's, it's kind of the same thing as, you know, why are they 1-11 at night? Yeah. You know, just why are they playing better on the road than they are at home? I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. Well, Typically, it's the other way around. Right. Right. And Tom and I were just talking about that. I mean, this this deal of not, uh, you know, hitting 250 here at home, and uh, that's, you know, the, the seventh or fifth worst in the uh, American League. That doesn't equate with Ranger baseball that we've seen no. since this ballpark opened no, 20 any, years ago. Not anywhere near that. It's usually lopsided in the other direction. Yeah. You know, have the troubles on the road, maybe 500, maybe a little bit below. Uh, but actually, in recent years, they've done well at home and on the road, mm -hmm. but better still at home. Payoff pitch on the way, and that's outside. Ball four, a leadoff pass. Puts Joseph on. And he will take the Orioles back to the top of the order, and that will be a walk that I think Colby Lewis will be a little upset about. That number nine hitter with a three-run lead here in the middle inning. Point. And it looks like it was not just close enough to the strike zone to be a strike. It looked like it was almost in the strike zone. Let me revise what I was going to say. Colby Lewis won't be mad that he walked the guy. He'll be mad that he didn't get the call for a strike. <laughs> didn't realize it was that close, and it uh, it certainly was. So now Nick Markake is up. Had a two-run home run his last time to the plate. And Colby starts him off with a strike. Marquecas, five home runs now, 23 RBI. He's up there with Caleb Joseph, the runner at first. Nobody out here in the fifth inning. Oh, one pitch. Off the outside corner. Well, I guess where I was going with that, how does that happen to you? Is it, you come off the road trip, you have an off day. And then the ball club kind of goes flat, and uh, you know that we didn't see a flat club on the on the road trip. Not one day, not one day. Even the losses they had, they were not flat. Uh, for whatever reason, you know, sometimes that does happen. You have that off yeah. day. You've had a successful road trip or a successful homestand. You have that off day. It can it can zap you a little bit. But you know, this team over the years has been pretty resilient, and that really hasn't been a big issue for them. But for whatever reason. You know, playing at home this year just hasn't been a good thing for them. One and two the count. Lewis been at the waist to taking the side. Now he's set. The pitch is high and outside. Two and two to Markakis. Now this was the count that Nick Markakis got a high fastball from Lewis last time and turned it around. 368 foot home run to right. Got Joseph stretching his lead at first base. And 
That pitch apparently low. Check, check out the ball last night that he hit the home run. Looked like middle of the plate, top of the strike zone. A little bit farther than the one today. Tonight against Kobe Lewis, top of the strike zone, middle of the plate. Not quite as far, but pretty close to the same general direction on yep. almost the exact same pitch. Now the 3-2 with Joseph running, and the pitch is fouled back. And we'll come back and try it again. And so that's probably an area that Colby Lewis would like to stay away from in this at bat. And it looked like he was trying to throw the ball up on that pitch, but much more inside than right. it actually was. Colby, 81 pitches tonight so far, 52 strikes, 29 balls. Working with a 5 to 2 lead with one on and nobody out here in the fifth inning. Joseph again on the move. The pitch is fouled away again. Well, we will reset and try it one more time. Colby tonight, you know, inning by inning, 10 pitches in the first is all he took. Had a 1 2 3 inning with two strikeouts. But 16 in the second. In the third inning, he gave up uh, the two runs, 28 pitches. And then back to 14 last inning. Now 14 this inning. He's still looking for his first out. Marquez back in. Lewis reading the signs. Right-hander says okay, and another 3-2 pitch. Instead, is a toss to first. Chris Jimenez. Flashing the signs out. He wants that fastball down and away. There goes Joseph. The pitch is hit deep to right center field. Long run going over for Leonis Martin. He's under it and makes the catch. And back to first is Caleb Joseph. And Martin, who is playing over in left center field, had a long, long way to go, was able to run her down as that ball hung up there for him. A long out number one. Yeah, Marquecas hit that ball pretty well. He's not the kind of guy with the power to consistently drive the ball 420 feet to right center field. But he hit that one pretty good. Not far enough to get it over Leonis's head, though. Good communication between Leonis and Michael Choice. Leonis does not want to bump into Michael Choice out there in the outfield. <laughs> no. Neither would I or neither would anybody else for that matter. Well, here's Manny Machado who has struck out and walked tonight. Check swing gets a strike anyway. Nothing in one. Machado at 234. Three home runs, 10 driven in. Majors uh, kind of bunching Machado up the middle a little bit in the infield. Middle door, uh, only about five steps to the side of the bag, and Machado rips one to right field, a base hit. Choice over to cut it off. Around second, on his way to third, is Caleb Joseph. And now runners at the corners for the Orioles here in the fifth inning. And Nelson Cruz coming up. Well, Machado gets hot. He hits balls like that all day long. He can hit a low line drive with the best of them. Hit a double earlier in the series to left field on a line. This pitch is out over the plate. You can see the kind of swing that produces those line drives. And hit a lot of those in his career. To a little bit of a slow start. He came back from an injury. And it's been a while for him to get going, but before the season's over, he'll get it going. He's a good hitter. Mike Maddox out to the uh, mound to talk to Colby Lewis and Chris Jimenez. Colby now has allowed five base hits. Giving up a walk and a single in this inning. One out. Nelly Cruz facing his former teammate Colby Lewis tonight has struck out twice.
Cruz, the best run producer in baseball at the moment. And a guy you'd rather not see in this situation, but you got to do something with him. Colby ready. He came inside with Cruz and got that uh, foul ball for strike one. Colby tonight with the two strikeouts of Cruz, and this is one guy he has not made a mistake to. I mean, he's, he has executed every single pitch that he has tried to throw to Nelly Cruz perfectly tonight. And I'm not saying that to jinx him. Well, I don't think this is the guy he really wants to make a mistake to. And I think he also has a pretty good idea of where uh, Nelly's holes are. Right. So as long as he hits those, uh, those spots, he should do okay. One ball and one strike to Cruz. Runners at first and third, one out in the top of the fifth inning. And that pitch just off the outer edge. It's two and one. Colby kind of a questioning look to uh, Lance Barrett. Pitcher's pitch. Pitcher definitely wants that one. Could have been called a strike. Not always called a strike, but sometimes it is. No big difference between two and one and one and two in the count from a pitcher or a hitter standpoint. I would bet you see more more guys get upset about calls on that particular pitch than in that, in that count than any other because of the, the great dif difference there is between hitting or pitching with a 2 1 count or a 1 2 count. Ripping him is good slider. It's 2 and 2. The last time he went to two strikes, he threw the slider and he threw it further away from Nelly Cruz. In fact, way out of the strike zone, he got him to offer at it. But a duplication of that same slider that he just got him to swing at, be pretty good. Let's see what Chris Jimenez comes up with. He wants that slider again. Pretty good idea. There goes Machado. The pitch is swung on and foul tip into the glove of Jimenez, and Chris couldn't get a grip on it. So the stolen base gets Machado in scoring position. But there are now two outs as Cruz goes down swinging for the third time tonight. Not sure. Nelly had to be at least in the back of his mind anticipating a slider, and he's seen several of them down and away. He's probably thinking down and away instead. He. Was one of those spinners up. Then he couldn't couldn't make contact with it. So now I can say Colby Lewis is executing all but one pitch to Nelson Cruz. <laughs> yeah, he might not have thrown it where he wanted to, but I think he'll take the result. Yep. Well, that's one of those ones too. You make enough good pitches, you can get away with the one that's not so good. And Adam Jones shoots one down the right field line that is slicing. Going foul, it is 0 and 1. I gotta hold my breath every time Jones hits a ball that way because on the first night here, he clanked one off the foul pole. But it looked like, for all intents and purposes, it was gonna be foul off his bat. He hit that foul pole about you know, 20 feet up. He just hit a rocket down, down there. Jones tonight, 0 for 2. He has grounded out twice. Caleb Joseph at third, Manny Machado at second. Lewis still working from the stretch. And a drive to center. Leonis Martin going over that ball, hooking away, and he can't get there. It's off his glove and in for a hit. Two runs are home. And that makes it a 5-4 to four Ranger lead. Yeah, it, looked like, it looked like a catchable ball. It looked like... Martin might not have taken a direct route to the ball, but he finally got to it, got it in his glove, and dropped it as he dove and hit the ground. Let's take a look at him playing right center field. The ball's hit the left center field. You know, the only thing I can think of, it might have been knuckling out there a little bit. Sometimes when that ball comes out there, it would be a knuckle ball, and those are difficult to catch. Yeah, it, it looked like the ball was not slicing back to him, but maybe cutting away from him a little bit. 
Definitely looked like he was fooled a little bit on it. And you might be right, Mac, on the knuckling aspect of it. Generally, a ball that Leonis catches easily. That time he wasn't able to do it. Well, it goes as a two run double for Adam Jones and it makes it a one run game. And Jones now with a tying run at second base for Chris Davis. Looks like he got it in the glove and just popped out on him. Davis, a sharp single to right his last time up there. And he gets another base hit to right field. That'll score Jones from second. Davis around first and puts the brakes on as Michael Choice gets the ball back in. But Chris Davis has tied this ball game with a, an RBI single to right. It is 5-5. Davis driving in his 27th run of the year. Pass ball up. And Chris hits it just past Odor. Odor was as tall as Scope. He might have been able to catch that ball. <laughs> <laughs> no, this ball game, even at five, the hits are now even at seven. Here's J.J. Hardy, and he fouls off the first pitch. 0-1-1. Hardy a double and two trips. Well, the damage done with two outs here in the fifth inning. A two-out, two-run double off the glove of Leonis Martin in center by Adam Jones. And then a Chris Davis line drive single. Plating Jones with a tying run. Fouled away again. And Colby Lewis with the count of no balls and two strikes. Colby now approaching that 100 pitch mark. What a fairly uh, good pitch count coming into this inning. But he has been forced to work overtime here. And another foul ball. Twenty nine pitches. Colby will have at least a 30 pitch in. to keep this ball game tied right now. And Chris Davis at first with two outs. J.J. Hardy at the plate. Davis on the move, and the pitch is skied to shallow right field. Michael Choice ambling in, makes the grab, and that'll do it. But with two outs, the Orioles strike. They get... Uh, Three runs on three hits and a walk. Leave one. Halfway through the game, Rangers five, Orioles five.
Globe Life Park in Arlington and welcome you back with a Coors Light cold hard fact about Tanner Shepherds. Did you guys know on this, the amateur baseball draft, that Mr. Shepherds was drafted three times as an amateur, 2005 by Baltimore, 08 by Pittsburgh, and then of course in 2009 by your Texas Rangers, 44th overall. And Tanner Shepherds, as you can see, back and available for these Rangers out of the bullpen, working his way back from rehab. And um, he says, you know what, guys? He was supposed to be in that starting role. He's happy to be coming out of those gates. He just wants to throw the baseball at some point in time for these Texas Rangers, whenever or wherever it may be. All right, Emily, thank you. Yeah, well, Elvis Andrews leading off the bottom of the fifth. Rangers now in a dead heat with the Orioles. Rangers at one time led five to nothing. Orioles have come back to even things up as Elvis takes a breaking ball for his strike. Andrews tonight, two for two. He has doubled, singled, driven in a run, and scored a run. You know, Buzz, we were talking about Chris yeah, Tillman I... before the game and the fact that he is 5-0 and on the road with a 5.51 ERA. He had three bad games coming into this game on the road. One of them, he gave up eight runs in the first inning at Pittsburgh, and the Orioles came back got back in the ball game he ended up with a no decision and there's another example of it tonight he ends up giving up five runs in one inning of work tonight and we'll get a no decision in tonight's ball game too so he continues to be five and zero oh on the road his era is probably over six now and he still has yet to get a defeat chopped up the middle behind the bag at second aj hardy unleashes a strong throw and gets elvis by half a step no one out, and Mitch Moreland now will be next to face Brad Brock. Well, this is almost certainly the way it has to have been going for Tillman to have those numbers. And, you know, he's had his four bad games on the road, and in all four of them, the Orioles have scored enough runs to keep him from getting a loss. Mentioned on the road, uh, at home, he's 0 2, but his ERA is 2.78. So he probably deserves better at home and doesn't deserve what he's gotten on the road. First pitch to Mitch, a rip and a miss. Now Emily is talking about the uh, amateur draft tonight. Rangers just made their first pick. Uh, pick. It's a local product out of Sanger High School. Luis Ortiz. Excuse me, that's, oh, yeah, it's Saugus High School. California. Sanger, California? Okay. Anyway, John Daniels is going to be talking to uh, Jim Knox here very shortly about uh, that pick and uh, how the draft is going from the Rangers' perspective. So stay tuned for that. We'll have uh, John on here in the next you know, 20 minutes or so. Two and one, the count to Mitch Moreland. Mitch had a Big two-run uh, single back in the first inning. Up there now with the bases empty and one away here in the fifth. It's way inside and Adrian Beltre, a nice play in the on-deck circle. So three and one to Mitch. <laughs> Adrian had a good time with the fans over there trying to throw it over his head and over the screen and couldn't get it up high enough there. Let me try it again. Now. Mitch digging back in. Three balls and one strike. Outside ball four. And Mormon draws the walk. So he is aboard with Beltrick coming up. Time now for a Mazda game break once again. Here's John Radigan. John. All right, John, thank you. Well, in the meantime, uh, Buck Showalter's gone to the mound, taking the ball from 
Brad Brock, and he's called on Ryan Webb. So Webb, the uh, big, tall right-hander, will come in out of the Orioles' bullpen. Back after this on Fox Sports Southwest. Indians here at Globe Live Park. Free game coverage starts at 2 p.m. Then at 6 p.m. It's baseball night in America on Fox as the Yankees meet the Royals or the A's battle these Orioles. It all begins at 2 p.m. on Saturday on Fox Sports 1 and streaming on Fox Sports Go. And you can tune in to the uh, Ranger game and see uh, our booth partner here, Mark McLemore. We're going to work that game for Fox Sports 1. Where's going? Thank you. Mac will be there. Who are you working with? You know what? Uh, yes, I do. But okay. I'm gonna. That's it. Justin Kutcher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's gonna be. It's gonna be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Good. Good. Ryan Webb, the six foot six inch right hander, on now to face Adrian Beltring. Mitch Moreland at first. One out. A tie ball game here in the fifth inning. He looks at strike one. Adrian, one for two tonight. He's a single to right. He's also grounded into a double play. That's inside. One and one. Beltre at 309 with the average. He has been on a tear of late. He has had three home runs against the Orioles in the first two games of this series. Facing a guy in Ryan Webb who doesn't give up a whole lot of home runs. Double play ground ball to Scope to Hardy back to first. And the double play takes care of the Rangers. That is the third turn tonight. Picked out the fourth turn tonight by Baltimore. Rangers gone in the fifth. It's 5-5. And Mac, thanks a lot for joining us. We will see you after the ball game on Rangers Live.
Southwest is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. Take the EcoBoost Challenge to see why Ford is the best in Texas. Either starting pitcher around now is Kobe Lewis is out after five innings. He's replaced by the left-hander Robbie Ross Jr. Well, a key situation for Robbie to come into a tie ball game. It is 14th game. Nine of them were starts. ERA is 485. He's giving up six home runs. Trying to get that opponent's batting average down. Going to face the last three guys in the lineup. Robbie came in uh, Tuesday night's game, worked an inning, gave up a hit, had a hit batter, but uh, no damage done run wise. So he is out there now to try to keep this a tie ball game, ready to give the Rangers an opportunity to bat in the bottom of the sixth inning to go try and go ahead in the first pitch. Dude, Jonathan Scope is in at the knees for strike one. Scope 0 for 2 tonight, a ground out and a pop out. Ross back to the plate. And it's fouled out of play. In, in Robbie's case, Buzz, it's really not a matter of his health or the stuff that he brings to the mound. It's pretty much a matter of throwing it where he wants to. When, when he's at the top of his game, he can locate the cut fastball into the right-hand hitters, jam them in on the fist. It's really just a matter of executing his pitches. Everything else is fine. Got him swinging. The changeup right there. Well, three pitches, and Scope is gone. Bobby Ross Jr. strikeout, one away. David Lowe now will come up. Well, that could be a definite addition to his repertoire and a very effective addition if he can get comfortable and be able to throw that change up to right hand hitters and keep it in that location. As a starting pitcher, obviously, Robbie was working on his curveball, working on his change up. And as a reliever, it was pretty much hard. Cut fastballs for the most part. 91, 93 miles an hour. Well, maybe the stint as a starter will help him develop something to go along with that. And that change up to scope was an excellent pitch. Definitely helping. Pitch away and low fouls it out of play. It's one ball and one strike. Now the problem Robbie had uh, too as a starter, Tommy, you and I talked about this a couple times was not able to get the ball away consistently to left handers. Mm -hmm. Just for whatever reason, it was a mechanical problem or or just a confidence thing. He'd make a mistake and it'd come back right back to the middle of the plate against left-handed hitters. Now he didn't have trouble getting the ball in to right handers. But when you get a left hander up there, you couldn't throw the ball on the third base side of home plate consistently enough to uh, to keep him honest. Well, he's just got to block the left hand hitter out and pretend it's a right hand hitter. <laughs> throw it in the same spots, same side of the plate. 2 1 pitch to low. That is tap foul at home plate. It is 2 and 2. Well, the Rangers definitely need both Robbie Ross Jr. and Tanner Shepherds to regain the form they had last year coming out of that bullpen. They were key pieces. Uh, Robbie usually pitching the 6th and 7th. Of course, Tanner Shepherds was one of the best 8th inning men in the game last year. And, uh, desperately use a, a similar types of performances got him swinging so low down on strikes that looked like the slider from Robbie Ross jr. gets back to back strikeouts two gone for Caleb Joseph both of the pitches have come out something other than his 92 mile an hour cut fastball that slider was 86 miles an hour in a very good location a great start tonight for Robbie change up in the slider two strikeouts Here's Joseph who walked and scored in the fifth inning. It's a two hopper down to Beltre. It's going to be a very quick and easy nine pitch inning for Robbie Ross. So a couple of punch outs and a ground ball. Three up and three down. We're going to the bottom of six. Rangers five, Orioles five.
Slam inning brought to you by Sonic. Tonight's jackpot is worth $2,000 and dinner for two at Sonic Drive-In. Tonight, the Rangers are hitting for Melvin Jasek from Arlington. And if a Ranger hits a grand slam during the inning, Melvin Jasek from Arlington will win $25,000. You can register at any participating Sonic restaurant. Alex Rios, Chris Jimenez, and Leonis Martin, the first three to and win uh, some Sonic money for Melvin Jacek. Ryan Webb came on to uh, hit the double play grounder from Adrian Beltre that ended the Ranger fifth inning. He's back out there now to face Alex Rios, who has struck out twice tonight. His first one against Chris Tillman, the second one against Brad Brock. So Rios uh, facing his third pitcher, third different pitcher in his uh, third time up. Rios hitting a 316 awaits the first pitch from Webb. I think one thing we're seeing this year, Buzz, with all the shifts is there's a lot of hitters in Major League Baseball who pull the ball on the ground. Yeah. You don't see the same type shifts in the outfield. In fact, in a lot of cases, the infield is shifted one way, and the outfielders are actually shifted slightly the other way. There you go. That's what you do to it. You hit the ball hard the other way. Yeah, first hit it to second baseman, <laughs> and he's not there. But more and more, even with right-hand hitters, you're starting to see that shift in the infield. The, well, the hitters that are able to make a little bit of an adjustment and go the other way like this will be the ones that benefit from it or, or maybe force the other team to go back to more of a traditional yeah. alignment in the infield. I think that's going to happen before anything else. I would imagine there are going to be enough hitters. There are enough good hitters that can do that almost at will. Sure. And uh, it takes away a lot from a pitcher to try and pitch to that defense all the time. A one on, nobody out. And Chris Jimenez up there. You know, when you're up leading off an inning and you're a guy like Alex Rios who can steal a base, it, it Makes a lot of sense to try to go the other way and hit, get a base hit because you can turn it into a double if you steal second base. Sure. You know, some guys you say you'd rather see him swing the bat, guys that hit 30 or 40 home runs. But leaving off an inning in a tie game, nothing wrong with getting a man on first base. Yeah, and, and that's the key, too, in, in a tie game like this. I, you know, I think you've got to tailor whatever you do defensively to the score of the game and what's happened up to that point. And there are. You know, I, I know you've seen it. I, I certainly have uh, guys that are so adept at changing according to the situation of the game. They become different hitters. That you've got to be aware of that. One ball and no strikes the count to Jimenez. And he had a rip. Oh boy. Got a pitch up a little bit and fouled it back. He wants a mulligan on that. <laughs> yeah, he fouled it off off the sweet spot of his bat, it looked like. Chris one for two tonight. There's that last pitch. Ooh. And yeah, when you see the hitter hold his bat a little bit, he's thinking to himself, man, did I just miss that one? <laughs> you don't tend to hold your bat like that if you've taken a bad swing or not really connected. And that breaking ball backs him off the plate and catches the strike zone. It's one and two to Jimenez. Chris hit a bullet off the glove of Manny Machado down at third last time up. Went for a base hit. First time up, a double play grounder. You know, the, way, the way Buzz that Chris followed through and kind of held his bat there reminds me of Kurt Dykert posing on some of those 300-yard drives he hits down the middle of the fairway. A swing and a miss, and Rios going on the pitch. He is able to swipe second base without a throw as Caleb Joseph couldn't get the handle after the uh, swing. By Jimenez. Well, that is uh, one out. And uh, let's go out to Jim Knox, who has the president and general manager, John Daniels, standing by talking about the draft. Jim? That's right, Buzz. JD, very busy. We just came out of the draft room, uh, took Luis Ortiz, a right hand high school pitcher out of California. What can you tell us about him? Well, Butch Metzger is a scout, so I want to congratulate Butch and, uh, and all of our guys for the work they've put in. Uh, but Ortiz, a right-hand pitcher from the Fresno area, high school kid, performed on the biggest of stages. Probably as, be as good a pure stuff as there is in the draft, an easy arm, and uh, our guys are really excited about what kind of competitor he is and add him to the system. Okay, one more pick tonight. What are we looking to hear? 
Well, Kip and, and the guys in there, they're trying to line it up. Just take the best player available, not try to force anything. Uh, obviously, we always look for upside. All right, J.D., good to see you. We'll let you get back to work. Appreciate the time. Buzz? All right, Noxie, thank you. Well, it, uh, that's really a group effort, isn't it, Tom, in the draft? It definitely, it definitely is. Man. A lot of, lot of comparisons, a lot of talk, lining up your draft board. And when you're picking where the Rangers were picking, you really don't have the slightest idea who's going to be there when the draft starts. Kind of cross them off as they come along. It gets to, gets to your spot. You're maybe two slots away. You say, boy, we might, let's say that Ortiz was a guy they really wanted. They might start to get a little excited thinking, boy, we got a shot at him. <laughs> and then you hear the pick right before you, and it's not Luis Ortiz. And all of a sudden, you get your man, and a lot of joy in the room when you get your man. By the sounds of J.D., it sounded like he was a guy they had targeted. Yep. Well, Jonas Martin, a little pop out to short. J.J. Hardy doing the honors. And uh, Alex Rios staying at second base. He's there now with two outs for Michael Joyce. Chuck Morgan showed some video of Ortiz on the board as the Rangers, right after the Rangers took it. And he definitely looked like a great-looking young high school pitcher. He'd be a great addition to the farm system. Provided they're able to sign him, like, I think they probably did a little work on assignability and feel like they'll be able to come to an agreement. Not many first round picks don't sign nowadays, although occasionally it happens. Well, Joyce takes the first breaking ball high for ball one. Worst thing is to be picking late in the draft like that and maybe even in the second round and have a guy identified even sometimes before the draft starts. You say, look, we got a little bit of reason to believe this kid might be here. We really want him. And then right before you pick, have someone pick that player. That that kind of deflates all the <laughs> enthusiasm in the draft room. But you just have to go to your next guy. Plan B, C, or D, whichever you happen to be on. Huh? Yep. Michael Joyce, one out of two tonight. Had a big two-run home run in the second inning. And last time up, reached on an error by the uh, shortstop, J.J. Hardy. Michael hitting at 206. Got the go-ahead run, and Alex Rios out there at second base. Webb set, a check of Rios. Off the end of the bat, and Chris Davis will underhand to Webb covering, and that'll do it. Well, the Rangers get a leadoff single, but Strand Rios at second. We'll go to the seventh inning here at Globe Live Park. Rangers 5, Orioles 5 on Fox Sports Southwest. Start Michael Choice with his fourth home run of the year, a blast into the bullpen. That was uh, back in the second inning. Michael Choice getting the job done there, and that got the Rangers off and running very quickly. Two in the first, three in the second, but then skids kind of happened. Four double plays for the Rangers, grounding into them, and 
Mitch Moreland, a two-run single, also to Joyce's two-run home run. Baltimore came back two in the third, three more in the fifth to tie it. And that board game summary tells you we have a tie ball game now going to the seventh as Robbie Ross Jr. is out for his second inning of work. And the first pitch to the number one hitter in the Oriole batting order tonight, Nick Markakis, going outside for ball one. And Robbie had a terrific inning in the sixth. He had two strikeouts and a quick ground out to third base. Kept the ball down, had a couple of outs with a slider and a changeup. And really looked sharp. A nice quick inning. Falling behind Markakis, 2 0. Oh. Nick, that uh, towering two run home run in the third inning. And he skies one to left center field. Leonis Martin had him played over there that way. And Makes the grab for out number one, and Manny Machado will be next. It's been an adventure for uh, Leonis Martin, both in the outfield and on the base pass tonight. He's been running all over the place. Well, he had a, he had a situation early in the game where he was on second base and tried to steal third base with two outs. Didn't get a very good jump and got thrown out by five feet, and that's kind of a no-no for the last out of an inning. Probably one of those plays where he might have gotten a little bit of feedback from Gary Pettis and Ron Washington when he got back to the dugout after the next inning. What do they call that a teaching moment? That's a teaching moment. That's a teaching moment. And maybe a, with a little bit of a forceful message involved in it. Want to steal third base with two outs, you better be safe. And not a close play. A speed pitch floats outside to Manny Machado. Machado, a walk and a single. Three trips to the plate. One for two officially. He has scored a run tonight also. And down and in by Robbie Ross. Do you remember we talked about it uh, on Tuesday night? Ross pulling that pitch across the plate and having a hit batter very similar to the other six that he hit as a starter. Machado fouls it out of play on the right and it's two and one. I would think in, in Robbie's mind that. Uh, got to get to the point where you're almost hesitant to try and come in on a right-handed hitter with all the all the hit batteries you've had when you tried to do that. You can't and be successful, but sure it would uh, certainly be in your be in the back of your mind. Off the fist and a little lift line drive out to Elvis who picks it off the shoe top height. That is out number two. Good pitch. Got the ball. By Robbie Ross Jr. Got the ball in a little bit on Marcakis for a lazy fly ball. And really Jam Machado with that last pitch. So five up, five down. And an excellent assortment of pitches with excellent command. And so far, an excellent outing for Robbie. Trying to get this last out. A tough one, though, here in the seventh. Melly Cruz. Yeah, it's leading the major leagues and home runs and RBI. Takes inside for ball one. Cruz tonight, though, has struck out all three times that he has come to the plate. All three of those at bats against Colby Lewis. Hitting 315 as Ross comes back to him. And up under his elbows. Two and nothing. Target again set inside. 2-0 pitch. And a check swing. He did not go around. Three balls and no strikes. Tanner Shepherds loosening in the Ranger bullpen. Rio to Cruz. A belt high strike. It's three and one. Got him on the fist. Three balls, two strikes. So Robbie Ross just staying steadily inside on Nelson Cruz. Missed with the first three that has come back to fill the count. Robbie peering in for the signs. The left hander's ready. Payoff pitch on the way. Chopper toward the left side. Elvis in the hole. Long throw. And he gets Nelson by a half a step. Now Robbie Ross has retired all six Orioles that he has faced. With a one, two, three inning. Stretch time at Globe Life Park. Rangers five, Orioles five.
five game against the Cleveland Indians, and $15 tickets are available in the upper reserve seating sections. And you can go to TexasRangers.com slash specials and use the coupon code FIREWORKS to get that $15 offer. Well, dogs are still hanging in there, Buzz. Still alert. Still enjoying the ball game. Imagine they've had. <laughs> oh, there we go. Imagine they've had a few treats. Yeah, come on, Dad. Can't we go yet? <laughs> Hopefully they had plenty of water. <laughs> Hopefully they got a place to relieve themselves somewhere outside the ballpark. <laughs> Brian Mattis, the left-hander, on for the second time in this series, and he starts. Rubenet Odor for the breaking ball for strike one. And Brian Mattis, 27th game. He's appeared in a lot of ball games this year. Pretty good ERA. Starting pitcher, kind of converted into a setup reliever. Odor down on the count now. No balls, two strikes. Rubenet has walked and scored. And he is grounded into a double play. Mattis gave up a home run. In this series, give it up. I think it was to Robinson Chirinos to tie the ball game at two first ball game in this series. Well, there's that seventh inning home run from yeah. Chirinos. When it bounced right off the top of the sign That's in right. center field. One and two, the count. Mattis to the wind, back to the plate. Off the end of the bat toward short, picked by Hardy. Quick throw, and it gets by Davis. And into the photographer well. That's a good break. It missed the backstop there. And far enough down that uh, it missed the screen in front of the uh, Ranger dugout. And J.J. Hardy with his second error of the night. Scored a hit and did an error. And uh, very unusual for a, a steady shortstop like Hardy. But the Rangers will take it. Yeah, he won his second goal glove last year. He came into the game with one error. And he's had two tonight. Chris Davis, in both cases, was unable to come up with a very difficult hop. One bounced out of his glove. This one never got in his glove, got by him. The Rangers have the go ahead run in second base with nobody out. And the top of the order, Shinsu Chu, who has walked twice, 0 for 1 officially. Takes a Mattis fastball for strike one. Chu walked his first two times to the plate began the game by walking and scoring in that first inning. Walked in the second, got as far as third, but was stranded there, trying to at least get Odor over to third base. And that's going to get the job done. Rolled out to second. Scope on the run, throws to first, and Chu is retired, but on to third. Goes Rugnet Odor, and now he's 90 feet away with the go-ahead run here in the seventh inning, and Elvis Andrews coming up. Well, there's probably been some times over the last couple of years where Shin Su was struggling against left-hand pitchers where a manager might consider a bunt. But this year, his average has been well over 300 and over 400 at times against lefties. And Wash said, I'm not going to have a guy that's hitting lefties like that bunt in this situation. And Chu said, I've got to pull the ball, which he did. Don't get a hit. At least get the man to third base. Here's Elvis. Infield all the way in and a ground ball right at Hardy. It's off his glove. He retrieves it, has a throw to the plate, not in time. Wow. And the throw back to first, and Elvis is safe. Second error of the inning on J.J. Hardy. The Rangers have taken the lead six to five. Can you believe that? You see strange things in baseball, and this is about as strange as it gets. Last year's best defensive shortstop who came into the game with one error. All season long, he's made three tonight, two in this inning. Pretty amazing. And really, not a tough chance. He just took his eye off that ball. He had plenty of time. The runner was not going to come home. He had plenty of time to catch it and go to first. Ball kicked off the heel of his glove, and he never came up with it. And Rangers sneak a run in. Well, that's J.J. Hardy's first career three-error game. Oh, I, I believe it. Watching him over the years, he's about as steady as they come at shortstop. Just one of those games. Funny things happen in baseball. And uh, Caleb Joseph, the catcher, had to go in to get some new equipment. He actually saved J.J. Hardy, did Caleb Joseph. Another error. Yeah, short been, hop in that throw. Two on the same play. Now 
Well, while we have a second here, let's uh, head over to John Radigan for a Mazda game break, John. All right, John, thank you. That sounds like a wild and woolly one. Down at uh, Minute Maid, and here it's, uh, well, it's not going to the dogs. Hey, what that dog licks you, you stay licked for a while. <laughs> Mitch Moreland. You need a beach towel to wipe yourself <laughs> off after that lick. That's a, that, don't go for the Kleenex. That's the full shower. <laughs> wow. Mitch, one for two tonight, a two-run single back in the first. He's also walked. Got Elvis at first. And the pitch outside is two balls and no strikes. So Mitch with the average just a click below 260. With the RBI total now up to uh, 23 for Marlin. Elvis at first. Very definitely a uh, stolen base threat. Mitch had a pitch to work with on the inside part of the plate and swung through it. Two and one the count. Just a little bit coming off that ball, uh, that breaking ball started inside. And Mattis toss over there to drive Elvis back. Mattis has a fairly low leg lift. Low leg kick for his delivery, so not easy to run on. But also not a great pickoff move. I think you saw that the pickoff move was fairly easily read by Elvis at first. Tapper back to the mound to second. Throw is low, and that's all they're going to get. Nice play by uh, Hardy that time to make sure that he got the force on Elvis sliding into second. So Moreland now at first with two outs and Adrian Beltre coming up. And Buck Showalter again on his way to the mound and going to take the ball from Brian Mattis and he wants a right-hander to come in to face Adrian Beltre with one on and two out. Rangers have taken the lead. They are ahead six to five here with this pitching change underway. We'll pause for a timeout back after this on Fox Sports Southwest. TNT fan photo selection for tonight. Special feature every night about this time on Fox Sports Southwest from Melissa. Out here at the ballpark, the Ranger gear on. We appreciate it, Melissa. Thank you very much. Folks who like to tweet your 
fan photo. Maybe get it shown on our telecast. Hashtag Southwest Fan Photo. And we'll make a selection for every game on Fox Sports Southwest. Here is Preston Gilmet. Right-hander on to face Adrian Beltre. Fastball strike. It is nothing and one. Ninth game for Gilmet. 11 strikeouts in nine innings. He's kind of a dramatic over the top kind of guy, straight over the top. Like the old iron mic they used to have for the yeah. pitching machine. That might be a little difficult to pick the ball up though in his delivery. And Gil Met here on Tuesday night gave up a run. He worked the ninth inning and Leonis Martin touched him for a leadoff triple and scored on Torino's sacrifice fly. Here he's working a Beltray with Moreland at first. 0 oh 2 the count to Adrian. Trying to get out of the way and the bat stayed in there. Fouled away, still 0 2. Adrian denied a single and three trips, but the other two times, as you look at that last check swing, <laughs> they had Beltre grounded into a double play each time. Up the middle, that's a base hit to center field. He got two strikes on him, threw him a strike, gave up a hit. Adrian. A two hit night here tonight. The Rangers now with Moreland in second. Beltre at first half. Alex Rios coming up. Uh, down and in. And Adrian put the good part of the bat on it. Got himself a, another base hit up the middle. Two for four tonight. Came into the game hitting 306. Right up around 310. A little bit more than that, maybe. And the Rangers now have gotten into double figures with 10 base hits tonight. They lead six to five. Here's Alex Rios, who is one for three. And make that two for four as he pounds one to center field. Moreland around third being waved home. He will score without a throw. And Alex Rios, an RBI single. And the Rangers add on. It is seven to five, Texas. Boy, he put a charge in that line drive. That out there in a hurry. By the time well, Jones got the ball quickly because the ball was hit so hard. But the other side of that is he was so deep when he got it, he was really not in a position to make a throw to the plate. Mitch nursing a little bit of an injury. He's not running at full speed right now, but Jones was so deep when he when he caught this ball, there was nothing he could do. He didn't have time to charge it. He's so deep. Thought about throwing it. Decided not to. And Mitch was able to score. Oh, very important extra run here in the seventh inning. A two-run game now. It's seven to five. Chris Jimenez, one for three, is at the plate. He's got Beltre at second, Rios at first. And up the middle, base hit to center. Beltre being waved around. Adam Jones with the throw. It's all the way through, but Beltre scores. RBI single, Chris Jimenez, eight to five Rangers. Work to score a couple of runs right there. Went to 0-2 on Adrian Beltre, and then it was four pitches later, giving up three ropes and a couple more runs. Chris Jimenez, another RBI, two more hits, continues to stay hot and produce when he's getting the opportunity. Earlier in the game, we compared him to Kevin Kuzminoff, and it's, it's really a lot like Kevin yeah. early in the season. Yeah. Kevin got hurt, unfortunately, but in about two weeks' time, he did a lot of damage. Well, Leonis Martin grounds it to a fielder's choice. That'll do it, but Rangers add on with two outs. They score three runs total in the inning on three hits and an error. We're going to the eighth. It's now the Rangers eight and the Orioles five.
and we got to give it to a dog because it's dog night. A lot of great dogs out here. This is Winston and Pork Chop. Look at this guy with a couple chihuahuas looking good. But I think we got to give it to Beans. Here we go. We're going to do the trick again. Balancing the beer, the hot dog, Beans. Oh, nice job. There we go, Beans. You get the shirt. Also, the big dog bone tonight because it's dog night. Way to go, Beans. There you go. There we go. Congratulations, Beans. Good job, buddy. Well, Tanner Shepherds now has entered the ball game to take over in the eighth inning. Rangers on top, eight to five. And Tanner Shepherds is uh, first assignment out of the bullpen this year, coming off the disabled list. Numbers for Tanner brought to us by Budweiser. Those are four starts that Tanner had before he went on the disabled list. They obviously didn't go his way. And now he's going to come back and try to regain the form he had last year as an excellent setup man for the Rangers. And facing the middle of the uh, Baltimore order, Adam Jones, Chris Davis, and J.J. Hardy. And the pitch is a strike. It is one and one. Jones, a uh, two-run double in the fifth inning. In a, Line drive to center that went off the glove of Leonis Martin. And he deals strike two now. Shepard's getting ahead. Top those two fastballs with a little bit of movement on them at 97 miles an hour. That's what we were accustomed to seeing from Tanner last year. Speaking of accustomed to seeing, that's pretty much what we we're accustomed to seeing from Robbie Ross, too. Yeah. Two shutout innings, six up, six down, and a couple of strikeouts. Well hit to right field. Joyce is looking up. That ball's gone. Fastball up and out over the plate. Adam Jones goes the other way with his eighth home run of the year, and it's an 8-6 to six Ranger lead. Well, he got ahead with a fastball, but you're looking at a veteran hitter and a good one with power to both fields. And he tried to throw another fastball. Might not have gotten the location he wanted. He wants to throw it away. Well, it is away, but kind of up and away. And we've seen this from Jones in this series. He's got the power to drive it out of the ballpark in the other in the other direction. His second opposite field home run in the three games here against the Rangers. Now Chris Davis, a rip and a miss. Nothing in one. Davis two for three tonight. Chris had an RBI single in the fifth inning, driving in his 27th run of the year. Foul back. Shepard's going right at both Jones and Davis with that good fastball. Jones turned one around, and Chris Davis now down in an 0-2 hole. That's out of play to the left. Still nothing in two. 378 feet, the tail of the tape on Adam Jones. Eighth home run of the year. Pitch is high. It's one ball, two strikes. Chris Davis now hitting at 241 after a couple of hits this evening. Two and two. Tanner Shepherds had four rehab assignments. Last couple were pretty good. Hard hit ball and surrounded by Rubinet Odor, the second baseman. He throws on to first. That is out number one. Davis hit it well, but he just had Odor there. Now J.J. Hardy, the shortstop. Hardy tonight has doubled, popped out, and flied out. Two ninety-seven is current average with fifteen RBI. Here's the first breaking ball we've seen from Tanner Shepherds. It's wide for ball one. Now two and zero oh is the fastball missed. Okay. 
Shepard's to the wind, back to the plate. 3-0. And uh, Chris Jimenez going to trot out to the mound to uh, see if he can't slow down Tanner Shepard just a bit. Looks like Tanner really rushing himself into each pitch, trying to throw harder and harder. Yeah, exactly. That probably was a good time for Chris to go out and yep. just let Tanner take a deep breath, walk off the mound, and regroup. Ball four. Four pitch walk puts Hardy aboard, and all of a sudden, Orioles now have the uh, tying run coming to the plate in Jonathan Scope. Scope tonight has grounded out, popped out, and struck out. Young man from Willemstead, Curacao. His second tour of duty with the Orioles came up last year and lines one foul. And the third base side, Adrian Beltre, with his glove off, he was about ready to throw his glove at the ball. Or you could tell exactly what scope had in mind in that at bat. He said he just walked the batter. He's only thrown one breaking ball. He's throwing hard. I'm looking fastball. I'm going to try to hit the first one I see. So I'm getting ready and I'm going to get out in front. That's exactly what he did. Fortunately, he pulled it foul. He had a chopper to third. Beltre second for one. Odor turns it and gets it. 5-4-3 with some fancy glove work and footwork. Beltre, Odor, and Moreland, and the Orioles are done in the eighth. A run on one hit, nobody left. Rangers lead it eight to six as we go to the bottom of inning number eight. Bottom of the eighth here at Globe Life Park in Arlington. This one will wrap up against the Orioles. The homestand continues tomorrow as the Cleveland Indians come to town. The return of all-around good guy David Murphy and, of course, Michael Bourne, who is riding a eight-game hitting streak with a 344 average. He will face off against Hugh Darvish, who gets the ball for the Rangers. Of course, this brought to you by AT&T U-verse TV. All right, Em. We'll look forward to that uh, start of that series against the Cleveland Indians. And T.J. McFarland, uh, the new pitcher on the hill for the Baltimore Orioles as we go to the bottom of the eighth. Michael Choice starting things off, takes ball one. It'll be Choice, Odor, and Chu. First three Rangers to face T.J. McFarland, who worked here on uh, Tuesday night. This is eighth appearance of the year, and Michael Choice got one right down on his left foot. He 
Swung and fouled one down there. That's the uh, foul tip two step that he's doing. That's going to be sore for a little while. Yeah. He's trying to walk it off and get back in there. It's tough to concentrate when nothing is hurting you, but when you go up there to face a big league pitcher and all you can think about is how bad your ankle feels after you foul that ball off the inside of it, that makes the next swing even that tough, even that much tougher. Probably makes you say things you don't normally say, doesn't it? Uh, in Michael's case, it looks like he's keeping it to himself, yeah. but he might be thinking. One one pitch that's rifled to right field and deep into the corner is one hop off the wall. Actually off the wall on a fly and then took a hop and Michael Choice limping into second base. But boy, that was a ringing opposite field double. Actually, it didn't look as tough as I thought it was going to be for Michael. He hopped back in the box with a bad ankle, hit the first pitch to right field. He got a line shot home run into the bullpen, and now a line shot to right field for an extra base hit. And Daniel Robertson is going to go out and pinch run for him. So <laughs> that ball hit him hard on the inside of his ankle. There was nobody happier <laughs> in the ballpark to see a pitch away than Michael Choice. He didn't want to see any pitch inside that time. That, that's fighting through the pain right there. He walked it off, got back in the box, didn't walk around in an excessive way, concentrated, got a pitch out over the plate, and drove it. And you could tell by the way he limped off the field that. He may have taken a good swing and gotten that double, but he did it while he was in pain. <laughs> we'll get some ice on that and maybe get an x-ray. Well, Michael Joyce retires going uh, two for four tonight with a two-run home run and a double. Daniel Robertson out there as a pinch runner. Rugnet Odor takes the first pitch for ball one for McFarland. Rugden one for two officially tonight. Also has had a walk. Lays off the breaking ball. Good job there. Tough breaking ball from McFarland, but uh, Odor would not offer. Rugden with a couple of runs scored. He walked and scored in the second. And in the seventh inning, he got all that started for the Rangers. That three run uprising with an infield single. And advanced on a couple of errors. Charged to J.J. Hardy. Way outside and low. And the count moves to three and zero. Oh. The door hitting in that number nine slot, and Buck Showalter seeing that Shinsu Chu is in the on deck circle. Doesn't get any easier after Odor. Outside and low, ball four. Rugden with his second walk tonight. He had not walked <laughs> in his major league career, and all of a sudden he's got two of them. Now we'll take a look at the uh, freaky fast delivery of the night brought to you by Jimmy Johns. Seventh inning. How about a couple of errors on J.J. Hardy? That scored the first run. And then the bats went to work. Alex Rios, an RBI single. Chris Jimenez, an RBI single. The Rangers plating three in that seventh inning. Freaky fast style brought to you by Jimmy Johns. Chew a slow chopper out to second. The only play that Scope has is to first. And it acts like a sacrifice bunt. Both runners advance 90 feet. Rangers now runners at second and third oh, with one out on Elvis Andrews coming in. Only difference between that and the sacrifice bunt is Jim Su Chu gets charged with the back. But he'll take that. That's a productive out. So now with uh, Elvis up there. Infield all the way in. And uh, this was a similar situation to last inning. Elvis hit a two hopper out to uh, Hardy at short and he booted it. And that allowed the first run of the inning to score. And that pitch way outside. Almost went to the backstop. Elvis two for four tonight with an RBI. Rangers eight runs on 13 hits. Orioles six runs on eight hits. They've committed three errors. McFarland studying the signs. 
And the left-hander has one he wants. The 1-0 pitch. Out of play to the right. This is look of disgust almost on Elvis's face. That was a terrible swing. What are you doing? Got a chance to drive in a run by getting the ball airborne to the outfield. Got that infield just in front of halfway. Robertson with very good speed at third. Elvis can get an RBI by grounding one past the pitcher. 1-1 one, one pitch. Line drive to right instead. Robertson started toward home. Now has no time to get back and tag up. And he's forced to stay there as Marquecas came on and made the catch on the line drive. And, well, that's a mistake that you just can't make. First baseman, pitch. That's one of right. the third base coach said, okay, you're going on contact. I'm not going to stay here on a ground ball. So get a good jump on a ground ball. So as a runner, you're at third base thinking, okay, I've got to get a good jump. I'm going on contact. The batter makes contact, and your first step is home. Now you've got to get back. Marcakis is not deep in right field, but with the speed that Robertson has, if he's waiting on the bag at third base, I think Gary Pettis probably would have sent him, mm -hmm. and he would have had a decent chance to score. Now it's going to take a Mitch Moreland base hit if the Rangers are to score here in the eighth inning. Rip and a miss. McFarland with the off-speed pitch. It's, it's funny the things you remember watching the game, Buzz. I can vividly remember a game against the White Sox in Chicago. I was on third base in the exact same situation, and Davey Nelson was the hitter, and he hit a ball almost exactly like that, mm -hmm. and I did the exact same thing that that Daniel did take one step toward home plate right couldn't get back in time to tag up and you feel badly that your team possibly lost a run you feel badly for the hitter that he lost an at bat and an RBI on the play. Moreland takes the pitch low it's one ball one strike. Well I guess the only thing that could be worse is if it cost you a game. Yeah I and mean, that's yeah. hopefully that won't happen here tonight. And it, it, there was no guarantee he was going to score on that. Marquecas throws pretty well from right field. He wasn't that deep. But as you see day in and day out, it's tough to throw someone out from the outfield. You have to make a perfect throw. The catcher has to handle the throw and make the tag. So it's it's not an easy play to execute. And chances are you would have been able to score. You know, Joaquin Soria ready and waiting in that uh, Ranger bullpen. It's Moreland trying to uh, make this a non-safe situation if he can get a base hit here and drive in a couple. Check swing. It's just out of his reach. And the count is two and two. Mitch one for three tonight. He has scored a run. He has driven in a pair. Now Daniel Robertson, the runner at third, the pitch runner at third. And out at second, Rugnet Odor. Slowly hit out toward short. Hardy unloads and gets him by a couple of steps. Well, the Rangers had a golden opportunity and couldn't get on the board in the eighth inning. No runs, a hit, two left. On to the ninth. It's Joaquin Soria time at Globe Life Park, 8 6, Texas.
six lead. 770 dogs were on hand to enjoy the game with the 34,000 plus. And I'm John Radigan up here at the Captain Morgan Club getting ready for Rangers Live presented by eSurance. Lots of post-game reaction to this one. We'll hear from Ron Washington. Emily Jones works the clubhouse. Noxie will probably show us a few more dog tricks. We'll get complete wrap-up and analysis from Mark McLemore. It is all coming up right after the game. It is Rangers Live presented by eSurance, guys. All right, John, thank you. Now the Rangers trying to uh, snap their two-game losing streak and also snap the four-game winning streak of the Baltimore Orioles and Joaquin Soria on now to try and close it down. Well, Joaquin on the season. This will be his 22nd game. Opponents are hitting 151 against Soria and one pitch, one out. That's not the place to hit it if you want to get a base hit. And David Lowe is thrown out by Adrian Beltre very quickly. Haven't had a lot of save opportunities in the last month. In fact, I think in the last 30 games, the Rangers have only had four. And Joaquin has saved 11 out of 12. Trying to make it 12 out of 13 tonight. Off to a good start. Oh, now with uh, the bases empty and one away, Joe Walter going to his bench. Steve Pierce comes off as a pinch hitter and takes strike one. Pierce hitting for the catcher, Caleb Joseph. Joaquin Soria trying for his 12th save of the year and 13 opportunities. And breaking ball is a little bit wide of the outside corner. One ball and one strike. Pierce has been a good pinch hitter. He's three for seven with a home run and four RBIs as a pinch hitter. So one of those guys that's comfortable coming off the bench, getting his rips in. And that's a bit outside. It's two and one. You, know, you want to make Pierce in this situation hit his way on. Colby Lewis worked the fi uh, first five innings tonight. Gave up five runs on seven hits. And he will have nothing to uh, do with the decision in this ball game. That's uh, Robbie Ross Jr. is the pitcher of record for the Rangers. And the count now is two and two to Steve Pierce. You want to make him swing the bat, though, to get on. You don't want to walk a man on to bring up the tying run at the top of the order. Two and two with one out. Big slow curveball got it. If you haven't seen that pitch and you've got two strikes, it's very difficult to do anything other than what Steve Pierce just did. And if Un be unable to check your swing. You're fooled by the change of speed. It breaks sharply for a slow curveball. And he kept it out of the strike zone. There's not much you could do. Soria got him swinging like he had a straight jacket on. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> All you do is walk back to the bed bench and shake your head and say, well, maybe I'll recognize it if I get another <laughs> chance against him somewhere down the road. Here's Nick Markakis, the crowd of just over 34,000, 34,254 to be exact, standing in support of Joaquin Soria and the Rangers. Trying to uh, get back in the win column with a W here tonight. Eight to six the score. Pitch to Markakis is outside. It's two balls and no strikes. A warm and uh, relatively humid night here at Globe Life Park. Soria set the 2-0. Gets the outside corner. It is 2-1. Markakis 0 for 7 in his career against Joaquin Soria. Out of play. It's now two and two. And Mark Markakis is a veteran hitter, and he's watched what's happened ahead of him. He's probably thinking right now, I've got to be ready for his fastball with two strikes, but I wonder if he's going to try to drop that slow curveball <laughs> in on me like he did Steve. You only got about a 30 mile an hour range to <laughs> have to worry about. Yeah. Two two pitch. Popped him up. Left field. 
Going out, Andrews. Coming on, Chu. Shin Su Chu makes the call and the catch. And that is a winner. Bobby Ross Jr. gets the credit for the W, and Joaquin Soria is 12th save in 13 opportunities, and the Rangers do indeed salvage the final game of this three-game series against the Baltimore Orioles. 8-6 the final tonight. The Ranger bats pounding out 13 hits against the Birds, and uh, Orioles six runs on eight hits and three very big errors, all charged to J.J. Hardy. And the dogs enjoyed the night, as did their owners, and uh, everybody leaving happy as far as Rangers and their fans are concerned here tonight. Well, the Rangers move back to the 500 mark. They are now 30 and 30, and they move to within seven games of the uh, division leading Oakland Athletics. Oakland losing tonight to the Yankees. The Rangers now 14 and 15 here at home, and will start a four-game series tomorrow night against the Cleveland Indians. So another big night for the Ranger offense. Finally getting it done here at home. A nice one to see. And let's go down to the field. Emily Jones standing by with one of those offensive Yeah, Adrian, Adrian Beltre playing coy and wanting to know what, he, what he's done. Uh, you've been a little bit hot over the last couple of games. How have you been feeling at the play? Better, better. I think everything's coming, uh, coming around better. And hopefully I can uh, keep doing that more often. Talk about this game, the importance of taking at least one game in this series. Yeah, you know, we got early lead, by nothing, and, uh, you know, Baltimore was able to come back inside the ball game. But, uh, you know, we uh, we scored a couple runs in the eighth inning, and I was we were able to hold it and uh, at least get this win. The resiliency this team is showing just continues to uh, come back and come back. Yeah, that's what we need to do. We need to grind it out and uh, find a way how to win ball games. Finally, just talk about um, Cleveland coming in here tomorrow, starting a new series, wanting to start it off right with you on the mound. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, Cleveland is a tough team, but uh, we're looking forward to win the, fit, the series, hopefully. One more thing, Adrian. i got to ask you, you. You said a few weeks ago that you felt the brunt yeah. of what this team was going through and you wanted to do better. What changed with you? Was it, And how has it happened that you've been on fire since then, basically? You know, I think every heater... Uh, get through highs and lows and I was going through my lows and uh, you know I know that uh, I'm one of the main pieces on the, on the, ball, uh, on the ball club and uh, I need to keep it going and uh, you know sometimes the guys look uh, look up to me and uh, I need to step up a little bit and uh, I'm doing a little better but uh, you know I can do better than that. I think you're on quite a bit of a high Adrian up top <laughs> and he says I don't get to interview him for two more weeks so <laughs> <laughs> so enjoy that interview because it won't happen again for a while let's guys. make sure he stays hot that long that, we'll, we'll get to him in two weeks uh, great win tonight 8-6 to six the final Texas Rangers baseball on Fox Sports Southwest is brought to you by Southwest Airlines find Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com by AT&T U-verse TV Check availability at 1-800-PICK-ATT, Rethink Possible. And by your Texas Ford dealers. Take the EcoBoost Challenge to see why Ford is the best in Texas. John Radigan and Mark McLemore back to Globe Live Park to wrap things up right after this on Fox Sports Southwest. <laughs> 